Friday evening, race fans, and welcome to Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV, Rogers YouTube, and Rev TV. Good evening, Chris Soares, alongside a 2023 uh, late model uh, driver, Gary Adrison, joining us uh, this evening uh, for a very special night. We got the Ontario Super Late Models in action tonight, visiting Delaware Speedway. We got the V8 stocks and we got the bone stocks here. And because it's seven o'clock, you notice we're about 30 minutes ahead of schedule. That's because there's incoming weather, Gary, and rain is on the way. Always gotta be a party pooper. Absolutely, so right away, we're getting uh, right off the hop here with the Ontario Super Late Models uh, for one heat race from this division, and you love these cars. These cars are amazing. These guys are super fast. I mean, they're super outlaw late models, and uh, they're fast. They're, they're, they're a lot quicker than what we are in the late model. All right, let's look at some standings here. We'll go to the bone stocks first. Uh, Jay Cox leading by just a measly one point over Jeremiah Rabideau. Uh, the last two feature race, uh, the winner was at Lovey. Uh, he was actually caught for some uh, illegal equipment in the car last week. He's actually under suspension now. So his win taken away uh, last week. Jay Cox leads Rabideau Wilms at 15 points, separates the top three. Let's go to the V8 stock. Uh, Paul Fothergill, tight race for a second. They're tied. Doug Stewart, Jeff Ferguson seven points off the pace. Uh, Simon Motorsports is a group of different drivers driving to 45 and fourth. Dave Everson in fifth. And the Outlaw Super Late Models, Glenn Watson uh, leading by 13 over Brandon Passer. Sean Grossman at leading or uh, rounding out the top three. The 0-3 tonight, uh, very uh, driver that you all know and a lot of people know from Delaware Racing, J.R. Fitzpatrick piloting the 0-3. There you see the 0-3 in red starting second in this heat. Yeah, I know Jared very well. He is a uh, former champion of this uh, series in 2016, and he's also won the, the Peterman Memorial Race in 2018. So uh, Jr. no stranger to Delaware, no stranger to these cars. I mean, Jr. and racing are like peanut butter and jam. We uh, have about seven uh, Outlaw Super Late models that are joining us uh, this week. Actually, there's eight, my apologies. So they're going to do one heat race. Uh, and their feature later tonight, originally scheduled for 50 laps, has been cut to 35. Uh, based on the incoming weather, we'll see the V8 stocks for a 25-lap feature later on, the bone stocks for 25-lap feature later on as well. But we'll leave things off with the Outlaw Super Late models visiting the track, and they'll double up in the start-finish line scott mackey returns after a week off in the flag stand here at the delaware speedway we have a new vehicle i believe the 17 is on the track now so we're gonna have nine super late models the 17 gonna be trying to uh, catch the back end of this pack and that is brandon passer uh, and he's a uh, top three in the points from innisfil ontario so he needs to get ready for this heat race lights are still on the uh, delaware speedway pace vehicle from a driver's standpoint we've got a, a lap to go here gary from a driver's standpoint when you know that the card is already being pushed up 30 minutes it's going to be shortened as the amount of laps are going to be run but what's that do to your mindset as a driver uh well if you were you know with the longer races you can wait a little bit and let things work themselves out get single file and, and then start picking them off here it's especially in this race these cars are uh sub 18 second lap times i mean it's time to go right off the bat and it's time to go ahead another Friday night from Delaware Speedway. They'll come off turn four to look to the flag stand. We're racing on a Friday night at the half mile. The 27 block, that's Mike Wilkinson out of Innisfil, Ontario. And J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 0-3 quickly out to the lead. And the 0-3 will try and stretch his legs early. In this 10-lap outlaw super late model heat race, the front four have quickly separated themselves from the rest of the field. It's J.R. Fitzpatrick out front. Wilkinson in the 27, up to second spot. Ethan Cornea, also out of Venezuela, Ontario, in the 51, side by side with the 72 of Dub Gillespie for third spot. But right now it's all the 0-3 of uh, Fitzpatrick. And he's used to this track, as we both know. He sure is. He's won several races here. Actually grew up driving the uh, junior late model here. 72, a little loose out of uh, turn number two. That's Mike Wilkinson and J.R. Fitzpatrick actually won a championship in this uh, in this discipline a few years back, right? Yeah, 2016, yep, 2016. So Fitzpatrick out front, a good seven, eight car lengths over Mike Wilkinson in the black 27. There you see the distance between the front two as they work turns three and four here at the half mile. The 51 is Ethan Cornea. He's alone in third. Then the 22 of uh, Watson. 
Glenn Watson out of Barrie, Ontario. And then the 72 of a Doug Gillespie. That rounds out your top five. Halfway this time by for the 0-3 of J.R. Fitzpatrick. Very, very light sprinkles here at the half mile right now. Very, very light. Nothing to be alarmed about as far as track officials, even though we're racing on slick tires right now. Yeah, these guys run the same tires that we do, I believe. The American Racer 10-inch slick. So coming around, uh, three and a half laps to go now for the 0-3. J.R. Fitzpatrick in the cockpit for the 0-3 team tonight as the Outlaw Super Late Models visit Delaware Speedway. Great battle for third now. Three cars, there's the 51 right there. That's Ethan Pernea being challenged by the 22 of Glenn Watson, the 72 of Gillespie there as well. That's your battle for third. Two to go this time by. Pernea in the 51, the 22 is Watson. Watson night but not better run coming out of a corner two exit. One lap to go this time by. The leader, Fitzpatrick, will take the start finish line right now. We got a slow one down the front stretch going into one in the right front flat. There it is. So the 73 out of the race, that's Mike Miller of Caledonia. As J.R. Fitzpatrick works turns three and four, looking for the checker flag this time by. Out of turn four, checker flag in the air for the 03 of J.R. Fitzpatrick. 27 of Mike Wilkinson will come home second. The 51 of Cornea outlasts the uh, Watson 22 machine by a nose for third spot. The 72 of Doug Gillespie will come home in fifth. Just one heat race tonight for the visiting Ontario Outlaw Super Late Models, the quickest stock cars in the province. Sub 18 seconds here at the half mile. You know what? And then I said that, and here they are. The quickest lap was an 18.03 by J.R. Fitzpatrick. 18.03. There you see the 03 of J.R. Fitzpatrick, well known around the racing circles here in Delaware, Ontario. More to come. On the other side of the break, you're watching Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. When you choose Pizza Hut, you're supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. We've been serving our community for over 35 years and take great pride in what we do. From our family to yours, thank you for choosing Pizza Hut and supporting local. Thank you to all of our volunteers. Whether it's long production days or late nights, we appreciate everything that you do for us in helping put on our productions. Thank you and happy National Volunteer Week. Are you low on food? Struggling to pay the bills? Overwhelmed by life's challenges? When you need support but don't know where to turn, just dial 211. 211 connects you to the programs or services near you. 211, how can I help you? 211, help starts here. Speedway Racing on Rogers TV. Rogers TV, YouTube, and Rev TV. Chris Soares alongside Gary Adrianson joining us uh, from uh, the late model division. Obviously, the uh, late models are off this week, but the Ontario Outlaw Super Late Models are in town. We just saw them before the break. And J.R. Fitzpatrick piloting the 0-3, taking the uh, one and only heat race for that division tonight. Now we go to the bone stocks, and this division has been crazy this year gary i know you've watched them as well especially when you've been racing on the same evenings uh we had a suspension to uh lovey uh, who won the last two features he got uh, caught with some technical issues in tech garage uh taking the win away from him last week and now incurring a suspension i believe that was the second major infraction to that car this year so but the bone stocks have been competitive all year round yeah it's uh talking to you before the broadcast here it's first i've heard that uh that he had the penalty so uh i mean it surely certainly changes up the uh point standings 
Lights off the Delaware Speedway pace car as we get set for heat race number one. Not quite sure. Looks like a low total for bone stocks. When I say low total, ladies and gentlemen, I'm thinking like maybe 30 cars instead of 50 some. <laughs> Everybody cars. gets to race tonight. Yeah, we'll see how many heat races they'll do with the bone stocks and to see if we're going to have a last chance qualifier B final or B main later. Out of turn four they come. Look into the flag stand. They'll go 10 laps here. Bone stock division on the track. A green flag. We're racing with the bone stocks. It's the 84 Mike Estelle. Or my apologies, Mike Etzel. In that blue 84, the pole car will grab the lead very early. And the bone stocks will work down the back stretch. The 611 is Jamie Shields to the inside now for second spot. There you see the 611 on the inside of the 50k at Ken Fraser in the Leamington, Ontario. And the first lap, Mike Etzel will lead it and the rest of the field will follow through. This will be the uh, the slowest of the bone stock heats and turns. Oh, we got it, two cars around in turns one and two. As the leader, or one of the leaders, the, is that the one, oh no, sorry, that's the 116, 116 yep. not the 611, reverse order of the numbers. Oh, we're still green, Chris. Oh, we are still green. Yeah, we're still green. Scott Mackey wants to get this show going, Gary, no yellow flag there. We're continuing to roll with the bone stocks. Now the field uh, very spread out. If you remember back in the enduro days where I cut my teeth, they never, th there was no yellow flag. That's right. Unless yep. the driver's door was facing oncoming traffic, they threw the red, but other than that, have at her, boys. 84, Mike Getzel, right on your screen there, out of turn four. There you see the uh, 92H coming into the pits. That's Leamington's Ryan Houston. He'll go into consultation from his crew. And we are still green here. And the leader, Etzel, very, very healthy lead. Almost a full straightaway now on the 611 of Jamie Shields. The 17 of... I'm not sure. That might be that might be Jennifer Hatch and uh, Jennifer Hatch in the 17H. Uh, that's it is Jennifer Hatch in third spot coming out of turn number four. So a straightaway and a bit of a turn behind the elite pace by Etzel in the 84 machine. There you see the 17 of uh, Jennifer Hatch. Here's the 53 green and black car. That's Kara Martin back for another Friday night here at Delaware. She's splitting duty between Delaware and Gren Ben Speedway, the quarter mile oval. That track's been off for a couple of weeks now, so Kara getting some half mile racing done here at Delaware. And they're back to our leader, the front of the field, Mike Etzel. Five in a book, five laps to go here. Bone stock heat race at number one. As we mentioned off the top of the broadcast, this points battle trimmed to just one now. Uh, between uh, Jay Cox and Jeremiah Rabideau, and we'll see them uh, maybe in the next heat race. I think what's looking like Gary as the cars are forming for the next heat race on the pit wall, but we're still seeing uh, some of the faster bone stocks in the pitter. I think we might have three heats. Looks like there's going to be three, yep. So three and a half laps to go here for the leader, the 84, Mike Etzel, out of turn four all by himself. Over a straightaway lead now on the 6'11 of Jamie Shields. Now Shields being tracked down by the 17H, Jennifer Hatch out of Ellumville. And Jennifer, there's a battle, nice three-card battle back in the field. The uh, 23 there is uh, Jesse Howard out of uh, London. The 22, that's uh, Sarah Penny, also in that battle was the Orange 71, uh, ex of Keith Parsons. You know, one thing I, I notice here, there's a there's quite a, at least six or seven ladies in this race. I Absolutely. mean, it's great to see. Yeah, for sure. No question about it. We have a new second place driver, it's Jennifer Hatch in the 17. Over a straightaway behind the leader. White flag this time by for the 84 of Mike Etzel. Jennifer Hatch in the 17 H up the second spot now. I believe we have a new third place driver as well. Is the 06, is that? Is Sarah, Sarah Wheel. Sarah Wheel out of Tilbury, Ontario. She's up to third now. And there you see the leader, Etzel, working turns three and four one final time. And looking for the checkered flag from Scott Mackey in the flag stand this time by. Checkered flag for the 84 of Mike Etzel. Here comes the 17H of Jennifer Hatch to grab second spot. Sarah Wheel in the 06 in the third position. The 611 of Jamie Shields in fourth, and I believe maybe the Jesse got for fifth. Jesse Hertz, Hertzel uh, in the 97 for fifth. Kara Martin comes in at sixth. 
Hannah Lamont is seventh. Ken Fraser in the 50K is eighth. Carl Bartlett in the 94 and ninth. And to round out the top 10 is Jesse Howard in the 23. All right, let's go track side. We have on the headset right now, we have Mr. J.R. Fitzpatrick. J.R., it's uh, Chris Soares and Gary Adrianson. All three of us know each other very well. J.R., you're in a uh, cockpit of a super late model tonight. How's the uh, car running and how's the heat race? We'll try and see if we can get uh, JR on that mic. And we'll uh, let's try that one more time. Let's go trackside. Uh, JR Fitzpatrick, Chris Soares, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. Can you hear me? Hey, it's uh, Chris and Gary up in the booth uh, in the cockpit of a super late model, my friend. Good to see you back at the half mile. How was the heat race for you? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I really love super late models. There's a lot of fun. and. And uh, Dario and the whole Passer Motor, uh, Motorsports group here gave me uh, an opportunity to drive really good cars, working really good. Um, spun out in practice. I don't remember the last time I spun out on my own, but they got a lot of power. And uh, the heat race was good. We were just kind of cruising around there and, and uh, trying to protect that tire because uh, a lot of good guys are here. I'm sure Glenn's going to be pretty stout in the future. Hey, JR, it's Gary here. Um, you're no stranger to racing. Like I was saying earlier, uh, you and racing go together like peanut butter and jam, but uh, your championship of uh, all different series is just for quick for the viewers because they, we don't get to see these super lates too often. How much different are these things handled than even the regular APC car that you drive? Oh, they're definitely a different animal. I mean, they, uh, the cars here probably got anywhere from 600 to 700 horsepower. Uh, they got a lot more body, so you can feel the cars stuck down the track a lot more. Um, yeah, they're a wicked machine, man. They're definitely different. Like I said, I spun it out in practice just trying to get used to the power versus the weight and, and how they handle. And and uh, I don't know if we're as good as we could be, but we're not going to change too much. I'm just here for a good, good time, buddy. Yeah, JR, time for one more quick question. Uh, I'm sure the viewers want to know what's uh, JR Fitzpatrick doing for racing uh, this year in addition to tonight? Uh, so I'm going to still do an APC late model. We're fourth in our third in points, four points back. So we're definitely still in the championship hunt there. We're going to Sunset Speedway tomorrow and, and hoping to close that up. But uh, until then, we're just going to have some fun in this car. JR, thank you so much for speaking with us. Great to see you back at the half mile here tonight. And uh, good luck in the future, my friend. Perfect. Thanks, guys. All right, J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 03. That's awesome. We get to talk directly to him tonight. That is a cool, uh, cool way to do it. All right, getting set for uh, Bone Stock uh, Heat Race uh, number two on the track for the scheduled distance of uh, 10 laps. It looks like the uh, William Clausen machine out of St. Thomas, the yellow 64, will be the pole car. So we will have three heat races for the Bone Stocks as the lights are off to deliver a Speedway pace car. It'll drop down on the apron and enter in the uh, pit road out of uh, turn four. Clausen will bring the field, including uh, Colin Willems in the 17 out of Strathroy outside in the blue 17. Green flag, we're racing with the bone stocks. 85 is a Tyler Wheel, second row inside. Jenneru in the blue 25 outside row two. And the field the nicely bunched. They'll go three wide out of turn two, down the back. Wheel in the 85, White looking for a spot. They'll go three wide into the corner. Clausen in the sandwich, Willems on the outside, Wheel on the inside, and Tyler Wheel with an aggressive three wide move will grab the lead after the first lap. Always exciting racing with these guys. They, uh, it's always flat out. They don't know how to lift and give each other room. That's a 24, that's Hank Clausen. He's come up to second around uh, William Clausen, the red number nine up there as well. Got one for the night, or that's the eight. I'm sorry, uh, Gary, that's the eight of uh, Charlie Verhoeven, isn't it? Out of Kerwood, is that what it's listed as? Yes, Charlie Verhoeven. So Charlie Verhoeven in the eight out of Kerwood, Ontario, up to the third spot. Now front three, no, or sorry, a single file. Verhoeven a little loose in that eight machine. There you see the blue of Jenneru. And now we got a little bit of contact out of turn two, but they're all staying straight. It was Willems getting a little touch from behind from Randy Martin in the 52. There you see Jenneru in the blue 25, Clausen in the 64. That's uh, the blue 17 there of Colin Willems. And Willems now up to fourth spot. Battle for the lead, Wheel now has a full mirror of the 24 of Hank Clausen. In the gray 24, looking to the inside in the turn number three. Side by side behind him as well. You see a battle for three cars there for the third spot. Side by side for the lead at the line, and Wheel will lead that lap. Four in the book, six to go here. Bone stock heat race number two. Tyler Wheel in the 85. It's uh, the 24 of Hank Clausen in the 24. 
Now the front five at the front of the field getting pretty bunched up now. Colin Wilms, there you see Wilms in the 17s come to join him at the front. Out of turn four, they come halfway this time by. He's hanging on for the lead there. Got it back. Jenneru just in a distance in fourth spot. And then the eight of Charlie Verhoeven. Three car battle for the lead. Verhoeven's kind of uh, getting distanced by the lead threesome. And now Jenneru trying to uh, catch the lead threesome to make it a four car battle at the front. Adam Jenneru out of London right there. The front four all together. And Wheel will lead that lap as well. Wilms to the outside of Clausen looking for the second spot. He'll stay on the high side. Jenneru in the blue 25, all four of them right there together. Down the back they go with three and a half laps to go. Williams are making a run to the outside here. Wheel in the 85, Williams in the 17, Clausen in the 24, Jenneru in the 25. All right there. Looks like the 17 of Williams likes to stay on that outside. I, I don't think he's had an opportunity to get down low though, Gary. Not really, but where he's running, he's running almost too high. It's the real long way around the track here. There's not a lot of grip up there either. Wheel extends his lead under the back stretch, but now it quickly closes under braking. But come around, two to go this time by. Getting some uh, little precipitation right now on the track. Uh, just a little precipitation, so we're still green. The bone stocks can run in some wet weather if they really, really had to. Yeah, these guys have regular street tires. Absolutely. Lap and a half to go. Tyler Wheel will lead that front foursome into turn three. Wilms right there in the 17. Clausen under attack by Jenneru for third. Coming to the white. White flag this time by for the 85 of Tyler Wheel. In the turn one they go. The front two trying to get away from that battle for third now. Williams will cut down to the inside. And Wheel will close the door and they'll fly down the back one more time. Half a lap to go here. We got a spin inside groove in turn three right ahead of the leaders. Stay the 28's around. Stay green. And we're still green out of turn four they come. It's going to be Tyler Wheel holding them off. Williams second. Clausen in third. Jenneru fourth. And the eight of Verhoeven in fifth. Rounding out the top five. That was the uh, 28 going around. I think that was, uh, it's listed as Chris Thorne. John, John Schultes? John Schultes. Schultes. Schultes piloting the 28 was around with uh, half a lap to go for the leaders. But we stayed green, and that'll do it for heat race number two. You know, another fun memory down uh, memory lane here is back in the Enduro days again. We used to run in rain or shine. Unless it was like lightning out or whatever, we used to rain and race in a downpour. Yeah, we are expecting, a, so actually, folks, we'll take a quick break. We'll tell you what we're looking at for weather on the other side of the break. There you see Tyler Wheel, winner, bone stock, heat race number two. We'll be right back. The Lovers will be racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Don't get caught unprepared this summer. White's Rental is your one-stop shop for lawnmower tune-ups and repairs. You can visit us at our new location, 785 Little Simcoe Street. Jeff from Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff here, and we are back for another incredible season of Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. We're going to tour some amazing backyards. We're going to meet up with some great folks, and we're going to cook some incredible food. Join us Thursdays at 7.30 for Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. And he fell. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I'm not driving. I'm way too stoned. How are you feeling, Veer? Oh, since we had that talk, I'm not driving tonight at all. What, what about, about you, Dave? Dave? You only had a couple of drinks. And only a couple of puffs. I don't drink and drive. No way I'm getting behind the wheel when I smoked weed, too. How are we getting home, then? Well, you can drive, Dave. Come on, Dave. Take one for the team, buddy. Don't let weed and alcohol influence your decision to drive. Yeah, I need a ride. Welcome back to Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. There you see on our screen right now a little bit of a drizzle at the Delaware Half Mile. We are experiencing a little sprinkle. It's a steady sprinkle as the bone stocks are on the track for heat race number three. What we're expecting as far as radar is somewhere in the area of 8 to 8.15, maybe 8.20. We are expecting a cell on the radar. It's a kind of a greenish, a little bit of orange as well, which is not good for a racetrack that is dried by 
getting regular vehicles on the track and going around the track. Uh, but so that's what we're expecting as far as maybe some heavier stuff. That's why we uh, started the show at about uh, 7 o'clock this evening. If you're just joining us, expecting us to go on the air at 7.30, we'd be on, on the air now for 23 minutes uh, as we're getting set for Bonestock Heat Race number 3. We push the agenda ahead to try and get as much as we could as they come out of turn number 4. And we're going to stay caution as the lights go back on the pit car and the... Uh, the pit car will come back out, or sorry, the pace car will come back out on the track and pick up the field. Uh, so we are experiencing, it's kind of turned into uh, a very steady sprinkle, if that makes any sense yeah, it's whatsoever. Not even a drizzle. This is a, this is a sprinkle. Yeah, correct. It's a sprinkle. Um, but yeah, as we mentioned, the radar showing we are looking at something maybe between 8 and 8.20 uh, to get a little heavier here at the half mile. Here, see Scott Mackey, our uh, flag man for this evening yellow flag posted back out uh, for the field we have uh, adju adjusted the, the uh, itinerary already before we even started at seven o'clock we cut the ontario outlaw super late model feature from 50 down to 35 uh, they trimmed themselves down to just one heat race uh, everything else as far as lap total on the agenda is status quo uh, this particular bone stock heat will be the fastest of the three heats based on average finish and average speed of the last time they were out. So you'll see uh, the points battle and the points leaders. They'll be at the back of the field. Uh, Jay Cox in the double zero uh, starting about six rows back. He is the points leader by just one now over the five of Jeremiah Rabideau. And Jeremiah uh, starting a couple rows behind uh, Jay Cox for this heat race. There's points for the heat race uh, race fans from 10 to the winner all the way down positions in the top 10 down to one for 10th place. So we'll look to the flag stand and still, still the yellow, yellow flag will be displayed. So frustrating from a, a driver's perspective, uh, Gary, obviously when you're running your late models, you're running slicks or whatnot, you don't want to race on a even, even a damp surface, but as far as getting buckled in, getting set, getting mentality ready to race, and then now you're being extended on caution laps because we do have a, a, a light drizzle, it gets fr frustrating from a driver's point of view. Yeah, I mean, especially when you're uh, out on the track and it starts to rain a little bit, because I mean, you're trying to keep as much heat in the, tr in the tires as possible. Uh, you know, you know, but you don't want to get them too, you know, too warmed up. I mean, they're not going to get up to race temperatures, obviously, but uh, you know, it gets frustrating. It, you can only stay focused for as long as you can, but you know, and then as soon as it goes green, I mean, you're obviously right focused, but uh, still, sometimes it takes some. Uh, wear and tear on your mental. We're going to stay yellow for another lap. Uh, Gary Adrianson joining us. He's joined us a few times and uh, uh, he runs the late model returning uh, this year uh, from retirement. Uh, we are so excited not to not to push the night at all, race fans, but we are so excited to bring in next Friday night as well. Uh, we have the late models. Gary and his fellow late model driver is going to run a 75 lap feature next week and then a double feature for the super stocks and gary and i were talking about, i said well what do you think about the, the 75 lapper next week and he goes i'm too old for this stuff and i said you're too old i said you're too old for this stuff you came out of retirement to get back into this stuff why are you too old for a 75 yeah. lapper uh, like i've been saying all along i've relapsed <laughs> uh, you know and now i'm going through uh, going through it and uh, i mean don't get me wrong i've been enjoying it we picked up some new sponsors this year mcgill construction and jd patrick electric but uh We've yeah, been having a lot of fun. Tell and, us how the season's and, uh, been going for you. Know, you. We've had a couple bad nights. We, you know, the last 75 lapper, we had a couple spark plug wires come off, and we came in and got it fixed up, and then went back out, and they fell off again. So there's a new set of wires on there and now. And you got a couple of feature wins, or, or one feature? You we won got, for sure. Yeah, two weeks ago, or, or yeah. two races ago, we won the. Yeah. Uh, we swept the night with a heat race and led every lap in the feature. So that was a good night. And last week we. Uh, we finished second to Connor. I think that's Connor's third win on yeah, the season. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about last week if we can, because we're still under caution here. The 55 car looked really good, but Connor Pritico looks good almost every week, and he just tracked you down. Yeah, we were, uh, you know, we had just, the, the monster trucks were just here, so the track was a little dusty and dirty, and especially pit road was really dusty. 
But uh, we were very, very loose through practice, and we tightened it up a little bit for the heat race. So, you know, we tried to go a little bit more, and we went just we went a little too far. So we were tight in the center, snappy, off, snappy loose off. And uh, we just went a little too far, but we held on as best we could. And, uh, I mean, Connor's been strong all, all year, and, uh, I mean, he's the class of the field every week. So, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll finish second all, all year long. I have no problem with that. Yeah, and you're a former uh, super stock driver as well and a former truck driver. So next week's going to be actually, you must be looking forward to the next week, 75 laps for you guys and a double feature for the super stocks. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be a good night. I mean, if anybody's been thinking about coming to watch this live here at Delaware, um, next week is uh, definitely the week to be here. Absolutely, and uh, for you country fans, a big night coming up uh, this Thursday here at the uh, racetrack. Uh, Rock the Park, London presents Delaware Knights uh, featuring Jake Owen, the headliner for you country fans out there. Also on the stage, Josh Ross and the Rec Laws. White flag to be displayed this time by. So if you're a country fan looking for a nice outdoor concert here at the half mile, DelawareSpeedway.com for all your ticket information. White flag displayed on the speedway. The sprinkle is now kind of lightened to a drizzle. We can see on the horizon some clear stuff, but uh, that's way in the distance. We do have some dark stuff to our left on the turn three, four side and some lighter skies in the turn one, two side. So we'll see how it goes, but uh, we are set for the bone stock heat race number three. This will be the faster of the three heats based on average finish and average speed and the last time they were out. So we're getting set here. On the inside will be the uh, 19, Michael Verburn out of Strathroy to set the pace. They'll come off to turn four, green flag. We're racing with the Bone Stocks heat race number three. And we should see a very competitive heat race. On the outside, it's Ian Levac out of Strathroy and a 10, the red number 10. They'll drag race down the back. The 88 of Starrett up to third spot. Uh, it's Len Starrett out of St. Thomas. Dan Story in the yellow 34. Inside of Starrett now for third. And Justin Culver for fifth. Three wide there you see at the bottom of your screen. Nathan Ria in that green and black car wins that three wide battle. Tightly bunched field back in the pack. Jay Cox and Rabideau, one, two in the points, separated by just one point. They're all together, but they're going on the high side, Gary. I was going to say, other than uh, Mike Verburn out front, like the whole field is right, still packed, right yeah, all together. Three Rab wide, four rows deep. Rabideau on the inside, and Jordan Wilms in the 92, and the points that are Jay Cox in the double zero on the outside. That's back in the pack. Meanwhile, the leader way out in front by a good 10 car lengths, the 19 of Mike Verburn out of Strathroy. Dan Story's moved up to, uh, to uh, a second now. Uh, now up to third is the 40 machine of Jason Craig out of Kamoka. There's the 40 on the outside of Story. As the field finishes at lap three, seven to go. Craig now up to second spot on the right of your screen in that black 40. Langford to the inside of Rhea. They're battling with Story for the third spot. Contact back in the field, caught up Rabideau for a bit. It's Ian Levac in the 10. He was started out, it. He started outside row number one, now he's at the back of the field. Nathan Rhea up to third spot around Dan Story. And Craig starting to track down for Burn at the lead. Jay Cox, the points leader up to eight spots, so he's inside the points. Rabideau sitting in 10th spot, trying to get around Starrett. There you see Jay Cox in the double zero. He's your point leader by just one over the five of Rabideau. That space behind Cox is Rabideau leading that second pack. There's a 0-3 of Langford, the 92 of Wilms, the 34 of Story. Jay Cox right here screen, that's the points leader. That's a battle for the fourth spot. The fourth place spot is the 92 of Jordan Wilms. Langford will pass Story on the high side. Here comes the 50 now. Who do you got for the 50? Is that Phil Givens tonight? It is, Gary? Yep, yep. Givens in the red and, and yellow. If I'm not mistaken, did he not uh, have a record? Was it last week? He did, absolutely. Yeah. That's why he's in that car. That's right. There's Jay Cox in the double zero. There you see Rabideau, top of your screen now. The black five coming to try and track down the points leader. They're both inside. Heat race points. Battle for the lead. Jason Craig to the inside now of Verburn. That's for the lead. Up the Delaware Hill in turn two and down the back. New leader, the 40 of Craig out front with two and a half to go. 
Side-by-side -side battle behind them for third. It's Wilms to the inside of Nathan Rhea. That 26 Rhea machine looking strong tonight. Craig will lead with two to go. Rabideau caught behind the yellow card. Back in the distance of Dan Story. Jay Cox, part of this uh, seven-car battle at the front. There's the 40 of Craig, the 19 of Urban, top two. They'll see the white flag this time by. Still a steady drizzle at this point. Jordan Wilms up the third spot, my apologies. Coming to the white flag here, Chris. White flag this time by for Craig. He'll take it. It's for Byrne in second. Wilms up to third. Langford to the inside of Rhea for fourth. Here comes Gibbons and Jay Cox. Rabideau sitting in the eighth spot. Just one point differential between him and Jay Cox in this heat race now. As rabideau has been able to pass a quick couple cars. Out of turn four. Checkered flag in the air for the 40 of Craig. Followed by Wilms and Verburn, Langford, Gibbons, Rhea, Jay Cox, Jeremiah Rabideau, and Dan Story. So Jay Cox grabs one point more than Rabideau. So the differential for the points lead heading into the feature is now two in favor of the double zero of Jay Cox. But there is your heat race winner for heat race number three, the 40 out of Kamoka, Ontario, just down the road. Down the road, it's like three minutes. You can walk there. You can walk there. Jason Craig out of Kamoka. Uh, let's go trackside. Speaking of the bone stocks, let's go to trackside to talk with Chris Lawrence. There he is. That's Joe Lawrence. Oh, it's Joe Lawrence, not Chris Lawrence. Joe Lawrence, Joe. It's uh, Chris and Gary Anderson up in the booth. Uh, how was your run tonight, sir? Uh, we haven't gone out yet. Um, oh, okay. Gonna be, we're going to be second heat here in the V8 stocks. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, we're just, just looking to shake down the motor and um, make sure everything's good before we make the haul to sunset tomorrow for APC. That's right. Joe blew up last That's week. right. Joe did blow up. My apologies. You are coming up in the V8 stocks. Any uh, concern right now? Uh, I see the first heat on the track, Joe, but any concern with you guys driving slicks in the light drizzle right now? Um, I'm just hoping we get out. I'm not really concerned about the speed or the, the rain. As long as we get out, just make sure everything feels good. Um, when a motor blows up like that, just a lot of concerns of drive line. You know, if you got it out of gear fast enough, you didn't wreck anything in the rear end, stuff like that. So we just, just want to make sure everything feels right, no vibrations, anything like that. And, um, just make sure it feels right and ready for tomorrow. So, Joe, we know that your uh, APC late model car is powered by, was powered by your mom 604. Um, Who's supplying this one? Did she reach deeper into the uh, pockets and uh, pull another one out for you, or uh, are you bor borrowing one? Just uh, borrowing one. Uh, thankfully, a competitor, Tom Gibbons, really stepped up, uh, said he had a spare one, uh, really helped out. Uh, so I really appreciate that from him. Um, just hoping that we can uh, really just pull something together here. We're, uh, we've had really good runs, uh, lots of speed. Um, we've just been coming up short for those wins, and I, I really want to pull one off here for the team. They've just been working so hard. Well, if there's anybody that can do it, it's definitely you, Joe. Yeah, Joe, we appreciate your time. Good luck in your heat race and your feature. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. All right, so let's go back to the track. We are set for heat race number one of the V8 stocks. Now remember, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the division with the 21.1 second breakout time. Gary, take us through that rule. Yeah, well, uh, you pretty much said it right there. Uh, they can run, there's no rules in this class. You run whatever you want, um, any car that you want. You'll see, uh, you know, super stocks, uh, OSS cars, hot rods, late models, doesn't matter as long as they stay under a 21.1 second lap time then they are good to go. If they break out and go 21.099, they have to come to a full stop on the back stretch and then they can get going again. We're underway, green flag, V8 stock, heat race number one, and quickly out front is Maidstone's Kevin Wheaton in that four machine, and he slowed right up. He let the 73 of Jordan Morris go right by. Now, if you remember last week, Jordan Morris on screen, won the heat race, but he broke out on the very last lap and had to go back in the field for the final results. So watch the 73 trying to make up for last week's mistake. And Morris will lead them down the back. Here comes the four now of uh, Kevin Wheaton. Would this be difficult for me, for you? Absolutely. Trying I mean, to figure out how to do a 21.1 second time here? Well, that's just it. I mean, they have no spotters. They have no clocks. They have no, no electronics in the car. They are strictly driving off of feel what they think it is. Uh, you know, and if they if they don't get a, a black flag, well, they're 
they're good to keep on going. Now, are they? Are they have? Do they have any communications from the from their crew as far as okay, that was nope. a twenty-one point two or anything like that? Nope. No radios whatsoever. All Just they have one is a one way from the tower. One way from the tower as Morris will come around to complete another lap. The four of uh, Kevin Wheaton, second spot. Lukens, Mark McDonald, in the two M up to third. Battle for the lead. Wheaton to the inside of Morris will drag race down the back here. Oh, we're under caution, Chris. We're getting a little bit, a little too much uh, precipitation here. Yep, it's gone from a drizzle to, uh, a, again, a, a, another, a little bit heavier drizzle. And we are cautioned on the speedway. There's a, uh, a car at the very back of the field. Looks like they're testing, which is the 03 Ray Morneau. Uh, late model. Fellow competitor in the late model class and uh, last year's track champion. Just a fun fact, that's, uh, that's my 2018 championship super stock. Is it really? It is, yeah. Ryan Bright bought it. I sold it to McCall's. Uh, Ryan Bright bought it from McCall's, and uh, Dan Monahan bought it from, uh, oh, from Dan Ryan. Monahan. So, I remember uh, Dan Monahan. Yeah, so, uh, so that's a That's from the Adrianson Auto family, th family tree. That's right. <laughs> so, obviously, it's an obviously it's an advantage. You, you as a late model, you compete against Ray Morneau on a weekly basis. You're not, you're, I would assume you're not sitting here saying, hey, he's getting extra track time and, and, and not me because you could do the same thing if you wanted. Not at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Ray's a great competitor. I mean, highly, highly respected driver. And, uh, um, you know, it's always nice when any of us can get into a different car. I mean, nobody takes offense. I mean, JR is out here running uh, super late models and nobody's going to say anything about that either. I mean, yeah. everybody's happy when everybody, anyone gets a chance to do any type of racing. I mean, racing's racing. Absolutely. Uh, we are under caution here. Uh, V8 stock, heat race number one, three laps complete out of the scheduled distance of 10 laps. Uh, it is a rolling rain delay right now. That's how you can uh, label it because we do have some light, steady drizzle, but we are still under caution. We have not gone to red flag status. We'll stay yellow this time by. Yeah, as long as the cars keep running, I mean, uh, you know, the, the obviously they've, they're running a hot exhaust underneath the cars. The tires are still got uh, heat in them. So, I mean, as long as they keep making laps, they, they won't necessarily lose the track, provided it doesn't keep raining any much, like any harder. Absolutely. Uh, Morris is your leader. Wheaton outside in row number one in the four machine. Uh, the 2M is Mark McDonald out of uh, Lucan. The 91 is Cody Colburn. He got his first heat race yes, he did. win uh, last week. First win ever. Yes. Good uh, for him. Little unfortunate stuff happened in the feature. He's out of Mount Bridges, Ontario. Take it any way you can get it. That's win's right. a win. Nobody else knows the difference other than a pitcher with a checker flag. 93 inside row number three, orange, blue, and white car. That's Jerry Broom. The blue 72 is uh, Chad Clutterbuck. And in the 18 at the back of the field, that's uh, Lance Groshock out of Kerwin, Ontario. A lot of local area drivers love to see that as well. Don't forget DelawareSpeedway.com for all your ticket information. We've got Delaware Knights coming up with Jake Owen and more uh, on the main stage this Thursday. Got a great 75-lap late model feature a week from tonight. Double feature for the Super Stocks a week from tonight. Going to be a great show uh, here on Rogers TV. Rogers YouTube channel and Rev TV and once again those of you uh, who uh, joined us about 15 minutes ago uh, used to our 730 start time we actually started 45 minutes ago we uh, pushed the agenda or Delaware Speedway pushed the agenda up 30 minutes because of incoming weather uh, are seeing some uh, brighter skies in the horizon uh, things kind of moving uh, to our left a little bit to the turn three four side we're gonna get gary to check uh check the adrianson motorsports yeah, uh, check, radar let's check uh, the adrianson motorsports weather network it looks like we're about three quarters of the way through this uh really? cell here i mean we'll, we should be out of clear out of this cell and oh, what, my. what about the cell that was supposed to come around 8 15 though gary it's coming isn't it well we're that's what we're already through that like, really yeah like we're so 740 picked up, picked up some five wind, and i mean speed like, we're, we're three quarters through this whole cell like Probably in another uh, 20 minutes, we should be clear of the rain. And coming behind it, we should be able to get the rest of the night in. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's so good news. So we should news. be good. We should be good. That's good news. As we are. It never uh, rains here at Delaware. I mean, rain, rain. You know. That. No, we have a vortex. That's don't right. We? Yeah. There's well, a vortex. Here. Once we get, as Jamie Mosley says, I mean, we get the vortex going and we can keep the rain away. I think it's finally stopped. Absolutely. Yeah. The light drizzle has turned to very minuscule drizzle. 
I think we might get the white this time by. See, the other interesting thing, like I said, about these cars is there's no rules. So some of these cars are out there on treaded tires because, you know, um, they could be uh, a super stock car, and uh, some of these guys are running slicks. Like, uh, you know, Doug Brown, he's in a late model. He's running slicks. And Jerry Broom would be on slicks because he res he rides, uh, drives that car in the uh, Hot Rod Series, and they run on slicks. So there's all different kinds of uh, things going on down there that really keep this class interesting. And still yellow at the flag stand, so we'll go at least another two more laps before we restart here. One lap under caution and a white flag, hopefully. And right now, Scott Mackey is communicating. He does have spotters around the half mile. Hey, is it raining in your neck of the woods or whatnot? It is only a half mile track, but depending how the weather current goes, you could be a light drizzle in turns three and four and nothing in turns one and two. Funny you say that. Do you remember the infamous train uh, truck wreck up in turn three? Were you here about that? I was then? working here. I was driving that race. I was the first guy into the wall. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. It was we, we came out of three and four. Everything was fine. Went through one and two. No problem. Full steam ahead going into three. And by the time we got to three, it was a downpour. And it just dominoes. One into the, one into the wall after the other. That and was I, like the, day, the Daytona fall race last year in the Cup Series going into the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. When they went in the corner, there was no rain in turns three and four. They all The whole pile goes into turn one one everybody starts sliding and hitting the yep, turn that's exactly what happened wall. yeah kathleen uh hosang back then but green now she chipped a tooth in that race oh wow in that one lights are off the delaware speedway pace vehicle we are set to resume here v8 stock heat race number one jordan morris at the point three laps in the book seven to go here coming to the green here chris yep morris will lead the field into the restart zone you'll see a yellow Painted line inside wall right there. That's the restart zone to look to the flag. We're racing with the VA stock. And a good jump by Wheaton again in the number four, but Morris will fight back on the inside. McDonald and Coburn, third and fourth spot. Broom in the 93 up to fifth. Wheaton will grab the lead. We'll ask Gary to keep checking lap times here. 21.1 second breakout time in this division. Everybody's always good on the first one Absolutely. because they, they start from a slow a slow starting point. It's funny you mention that because I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you something in between the two heats, and it started the conversation last week as Wheaton will lead him through turns three and four. He's extended that lead. I'll be interested to see his lap time here as he crosses the strike. Twenty-one two three five. So he, all good. He did drop ten. He went faster by ten by six tenths of a second, but he's still good. Yep, from and his previous was, lap. And he was four tenths faster than Jordan Morris. Morris in second, McDonald third, Broom now up to a fourth, and Jerry Broom in the 93 looking really racy. They'll come around to complete another lap. Still yeah. good, 21-366. Morris was, was a 1-7-3, so I mean, he's Jerry, trying. And Jerry Broom, that was his fastest lap of the heat race at a 3-7-8, but he's still well. Above the breakout time. Inside Mark McDonald now going for uh, third. Battle for first, battle for third underway now. And everybody looks good. Everybody's good. Three laps to go. Morris to the lead to the inside of Wheaton. Broom to the inside of McDonald for third. Here comes Wheaton back on the outside. Side by side in turn three. The thing about this breakout time, if you're Jerry Broom, is how do you not break out trying to catch the leaders? <laughs> right, Gary? That's just it. Oh, he was close. He was close. A 179. He's still good, though. He was okay by seven one hundredths of a second. Jerry Broom in 93. Oh, never mind. Wheaton to the outside for the Takes lead. It back. They'll come around to take the white from the flag stand. Here comes the 93 of Broom. Here come the leaders. White flag on the speedway. Oh, oh. Jerry Broom broke out. And Jerry Broom in the 93 has broken out. He'll get the call from race control saying you got to pull over. And there goes the 93 pulling over on the back stretch. The front two with a couple of turns left. Morris to the inside for the lead. Out of turn four. Checkered flag in the air, and it's going to be Wheaton. We'll check the time. And he's good. He's good. And the four of Kevin Wheaton will take V8 stock heat race number one. Great finish. Unfortunately for Jerry Broom, he'll go to the back of the field with that stop and go penalty for breaking out with two laps to go. Morris will finish second. McDonald third, Clutterbuck in fourth. The 18 of Lance Groshock out of Kerwood will come home fifth. Now, here, 
Uh, we'll talk about what I want to ask you coming up after the break. When we come back, Vien Stock Heat Race number two. You're watching Delaware's New Year Racing on Rogers TV and Red TV. Join us September 30th for the Yes I Can Gathering for Girls at Matthews Hall, a safe place for girls 12 to 14 to work through the tough stuff they face every day. Go to www.waymakerinc.ca for more information and to register. And this one will escape the Niagara end. We have a counterattack the other way. Ooh, that's a pass right in front and a goal. Wow. And how quickly can defense turn into offense? Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Chris Soares, Gary Adrian, top of the tower with you this evening. Thank you for joining us. The rain has subsided for now and hopefully for the rest of the night. Lights off the Delaware Speedway pace vehicle. Paul Fothergill in the 33. That's your points leader in this division. Will lead this heat race number two to the green as they'll come out of turn number four. And look at the flag stand. Racing. Green flag with the V8 stocks. Now we think that the 45 might be former truck driver Tom Zagarande. Champion. Tr former truck champion. Thank you, Gary Adrianson. And the 45 of Zagarande, but the 45 has a problem and drops immediately to the back of the field. There's the 45 of a, we believe to be Tom Zagarande. Meanwhile, Father Gill is way out in front here in heat race number two. Where do we have Joel Lawrence? What, uh, what's he piling, the 78? He's piling the 78 late model at the back there, yep. Oh, okay, at the back there, okay. Yeah, he's just testing. As Father Go will bring the field, Patrick goes high in the blue 86 out of the groove. He'll lose a few spots. Doug Stewart up the second spot. There's the 78 of Joel Lawrence. We had talked with him a few minutes ago on Rogers TV. Getting some testing done for the 78 late model. He just broke out, Chris. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah the 78. Yeah, yeah. The 78 just broke out. It really yeah. doesn't matter. He's in last place. Yeah. So he should be good. The number one of Randy Thompson out of Dorchester. Is that who we have in the one? No, that's Sean McGlynn. Sean McGlynn. Sean yep. McGlynn in the black number one's up the second he, and spot. And he just broke out. And McGlynn just broke out. And here goes McGlynn past the leader. I don't think he understands. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if he breaks out again. Check his time here for Sean McGlynn in the one. Uh, no, oh, yeah. yeah. A 19-2-9. Yeah. <laughs> How's a 19-2-9 go for you, race fans, in the V8 stock division? McGlynn just going around. Doug doing Stewart broke out. Oh, Doug Stewart, second place in the running, just broke out. So the Blue Deuce will have a stop and go. Yeah, McGlynn's just running hot laps he's, right he's, now. He's testing probably for tomorrow's race as well. And where are they racing tomorrow, do you know? Sunset. In Sunset, okay, Sunset Speedway. McGlynn will drop off the backstretch in the pit row. No, no, he'll do the stop and go now. He oh, was wondering why go. he was breaking. Yeah. <laughs> he was going so far away from the rest of the field. Paul Fothergill just broke out. Paul Fothergill, the leader, just broke out. Good night, team strategy. The 64 of Steve Book unofficially in front. And He's Dave, got a nice lead. If he can get stopped and get back in here, he won't, might not be too bad. Dave Everson in the 15 to the inside of Book for the lead. The 23 of Ferguson. Oh, we're a red third. flag, Chris. Red oh, flag. we got a huge crash. Doug, Doug Stewart, Stewart high and in got turn fire. number two. We got a fire. We got a red flag on the speedway. And Emergency crews immediately to the high side of turn number two. I can't say enough about the De safety crew here at Delaware Speedway. I mean, they were there instantly. Heavy, heavy damage, as you can tell, on the front and right side of that two machine. As the safety crew continues to arrive, but we have multiple safety officials on scene. Oh, they're calling for the ambulance. As we'll peel away now. 
as they continue to work on the two of uh, Doug Stewart. Uh, so the track EMS has been called now to the scene outside wall turn number two red flag conditions on the speedway we are uh, dry here as we look down and you see that parade of individuals moving to the tech garage I believe there is a special uh, drivers meeting for the bone stock division just about to happen again So I'm not quite sure what's going on, but we don't see that happening unless a special driver's meeting has been called. Gary, and you would know better than I would if that is the case, if uh, all of a sudden we see a bunch of people walking to Tech Garage, right? That's usually the case, yeah. I mean, they, they might have something to do with the weather. Uh, I mean, the weather's looking good. Maybe they, I just, who knows, maybe maybe they decided to put the bone stocks uh, back in front again and let the, the super lates. Well, they were always in, they were always the sandwich feature. The bone stocks were, they were the original uh agenda and there you see Doug Stewart out of the car being helped that's, out of the cockpit that is news. so good to see uh, both Gary and I have known Doug Stewart for many many years we are so happy to see that uh, obviously uh, well known to the uh, racing circles around uh, Delaware Ontario and London Ontario He's like uh, an obviously, iron man of the sport yes iron man obviously looking a, a little uh, ginger as they get him to the uh, back of uh, EMS let's go tracks I will speaking of the bone stocks uh, let's talk with Jeremiah Rabido. Jeremiah, good evening. Chris Soares, Gary Anderson up in the booth. Uh, we just saw a parade of your fellow drivers heading to the Tech Garage. Jeremiah, is there a special bone stock drivers meeting being called, or what's going on? Well, it's uh, news to me. Uh, uh, I'm always late to the party, so, you know, maybe I'll show up in style or something. Better to be late to the party, but first in the victory lane there, Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah, you're coming in tonight uh, one point off the pace of Jay Cox in the uh, bone stock uh, battle for the championship after a good showing by the five team last week. You you uh, finished a spot behind him in the heat race, so now you're two points behind. How's the five running? Yeah, the, the car's working good. Uh, just being a little cautious with the track being a little wet there. Um, and uh, the 10 got sideways, so I kind of got slowed up on that. Got a couple cars got past me, but uh, no, the car feels good. Uh, just any time the track's moist like that, you got to just make sure you leave a little extra room. I don't know if I was really doing that running three wide, but that's what I tell myself at least. Uh, Jeremiah, the bone stock, uh, as you've been a uh, uh, well-known bone stock for a uh, driver for many, many years, very, very competitive in 2023. Would you not say any? pretty much anybody can win on any night? Yeah, actually, there's uh, multiple cars that, that could win on any night. And the most impressive part is, is how many cars are all within a second uh, in, to each other in lap times. It's, uh, it's become a very competitive class, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun being out there. Uh, Jeremiah, obviously, uh, you can't uh, sit in the seat in 2023 without uh, some help, uh, obviously, with sponsorship. Want to thank some people while we give you the opportunity here? Yeah, yeah, I would like to uh, thank our division sponsor, uh, Wampum Fuels. I mean, it's excellent they came on board and uh, helped sponsor the class. Uh, also, obviously, i got to thank my uh, main sponsor, Bulldog Motors. Uh, Bill Mitchell, uh, the owner, has just been fantastic with uh, his support over the <laughs> for a long time. So, And uh, obviously, uh, I'd like to thank uh, A.J. DeBruin, Snap-on Tools. He's uh, doing, uh, doing what he can to help out. And uh, obviously, my crew, uh, Noah and Cindy and... And, uh, and Bill, and, and uh, I'd like to thank my family, my wife, and uh, my kids. They, uh, you know, sacrificed me being gone, uh, working on the car. So I appreciate everything they do. Uh, Jeremiah, oh, you got some for him? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, Jeremiah, I used to drive uh, super stock back in the day a few years ago. Uh, how much more work goes into the super stock versus these bone stocks uh, <laughs> that you run now? I, you know, is this like, I don't assume you uh, you don't just leave it on the trailer all week, but uh, you must work on it a little bit. But I'm sure it's not quite as hard as a program as the super stock used to be. Yeah, it's, it's not even comparable. Uh, the super stock, to stay, to stay competitive, you need to be working on it at least five nights a week. Uh, you know, you kind of get the weekend off as long as you don't smash it up. And every other night you're, you're, you're wrenching on the car, trying to find some way to make it go faster or, or just keep it maintained. And uh, as you would know, Gary, that uh, it's, uh, it can become almost a chore sometimes, but you got to take the positives and, and keep going with it. And, uh, and this is, yeah, this is much less work because there's only so much you can kind of do, right? You can only adjust a little bit here and there. So make sure it's ready every week and show up prepared and go have some fun. Well, thanks a lot for uh, spending some time with us here, Jeremiah, and uh, good luck to you in the future. 
Awesome. Thanks, Gary. Hey, Jeremiah Rabideau, the driver of the five of bone stock, as they're cleaning up uh, the number two uh, Doug Stewart machine. When we come back for break more from Delaware Speedway, it's Delaware Speedway Racing of Rogers TV and Rev TV. When you choose Pizza Hut, you're supporting a local, family-owned, and operated business. We've been serving our community for over 35 years and take great pride in what we do. From our family to yours, thank you for choosing Pizza Hut and supporting local. About 16% of the people we talked to actually became homeless during the pandemic. And it's a horrible thing to be. This is a man's heart, a heart in desperate need of medical attention. But because 78% of Indigenous people experience racism in healthcare, he may not get the help he needs. Become an ally. Rise above racism in healthcare. Rogers TV and Rev TV, Chris Soares, Gary Aderson. There you see the impact of uh, where Doug Stewart's number two V8 stock hit. Actually uh, broke part of that concrete wall high in turn number two. Now, Doug was uh, helped out of the vehicle uh, pretty much under his own power. Looked a little ginger on one of his legs, but uh, he definitely he was uh, out of the car and moving around. So that's great to see from Doug Stewart. But yeah, we understood that on, on break. We had uh, Sean, the race director, come over to Gary and I, and uh, he hit that uh, wall pretty much head on. So glad that Doug Stewart is, um, is OK and just being evaluated uh, in the infield as we are uh, under red flag conditions still just for that cleanup of the number two there you see uh, the horizon looking a lot better than what we thought about an hour ago gary yeah just a little quicker than what i was expecting but right on schedule for some uh nice clean skies for uh to get the rest of this night in yeah so they're doing uh, some quick dry repair as well on some obviously some fluid leak uh, and uh, turned into be a pretty uh, good night right now as far as the horizon looks here at the half mile. Plenty more uh, to come. We have the three features set to go. Uh, looks like... You know, the, just, it look, Go ahead, Gary. I was just going to say, to, to, to see the damage that that did to the uh, concrete barrier out there, it really goes to show the, the, the amount of safety that is in these cars. I mean, to hit that wall that hard and do that kind of damage, not only to the car, but to the wall, so are you and think, to have are, Doug are, walk away. Are you thinking brake failure here? That's a possibility. It could be brake failure. It could be thr uh, throttle hung. Um, it could be, uh, you know, there might have been a little bit more moisture on the, on the track still. Right. And being that he's in a late model, he'd be running the slicks. So, uh, I, again, it's an testament to the... Uh, or a, I'm not even sure I'm using the right word, but it, it's a good point to the safety yeah. measures. You know, we all the drivers wear Hans devices. I'm sure Doug had at least a six-point harness in that uh, late model. You know, and a late model is one of the faster cars out there and probably one of the most safest, safest cars out there. I mean, I'm sure if a, a bone stock were to hit that wall at that same speed, we wouldn't have the same outcome. You mentioned the six-point harness. We're on camera right now, obviously. Are you able to show what you mean by a six-point harness? Yeah, so you've got in your car, you have your seat belt. Uh, so you got one over the shoulder down to your right hip and then from your right hip over your left hip. So that's three points. Okay. Whereas a, a five-point harness, which was the uh, probably a lot of guys run, it's two over your shoulders, two from your hips, and then one down through the uh, submarine. Okay. And then with a six-point, same thing, two over the shoulders, two over the hips, but you've got two going down the submarine to, to, to do two different points to keep the, the legs separate. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, that makes sense then uh, as they're uh, getting the two car uh, on the uh, flatbed hauler here up in uh, turn number two. There you see uh, them lifting the two car 
uh, heavy, heavy damage from that heavy impact uh, just to the right of our shot right now. Uh, some damage to the outside wall here. Um, so obviously at a heavy speed here as we're still under red flag conditions here at Delaware Speedway. More to come on the other side of the break. You're watching Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Hi, I'm Dan Mailer. I'm the host of London Lights, the show where we talk about notable Londoners who have made a big mark, big impact on the world of music, entertainment, sports, politics. Most people that are uh, have received treatment for drug use problems are probably going to have a lapse. Join addiction counselor Dean Anderson for Invisible, breaking through the stigma of addiction on Rogers TV. Mondays, Charity's quest for love continues. Everything that I've prayed for is right in front of me. I really feel like I'm falling in love with you. I could see my future husband. But will she regret? What am I doing? Her happily ever after? It could be the last night that I see Charity. Every single day I've woken up and I've regretted my choice. You were not supposed to say goodbye to somebody that you love. <laughs> the Bachelorette, all new Mondays 8, 7 central on City TV or stream on City TV Plus, the app or CityTV.com. Welcome back to uh, Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. And uh, Gary, you were just talking about this. Uh, how is that? How is half that <laughs> I, car hanging? I got, I got nothing. It's got to be the wheels got to be chalked or blocked. And uh, obviously, you have the uh, chain from the tow truck pulling it, holding it on there. Wow. But uh, that, that's that's a first. So that is the uh, car of Doug Stewart. Obviously, out of the race, uh, we're inside V8 stock. Uh, heat race uh, number two. Good evening, Chris Soares, Gary Agerson. Thank you for joining us. Uh, right now, sitting at uh, nine minutes after eight, we actually started the broadcast uh, from the lead from our uh, Delaware officials at seven o'clock instead of 7.30, as we looked like we had some impending uh, or incoming weather. Uh, that weather's kind of subsided. We had some uh, a couple of uh, yellow flag rain delays, which were still under yellow flag conditions. The cars were rolling around the track. We weren't racing as we did have some light drizzle. Now we've switched uh, to from red flag to yellow flag conditions right now as the safety crew continues to work in turn number two. And the uh, weather looking like it might just be okay for this evening. Uh, that, as mentioned, they pushed the agenda up uh, 30 minutes. They cut the Ontario, Super, Ontario Outlaw Super Late Model uh, feature race. They're joining us on tour uh, this evening. They uh, cut it from 50 to 35 laps. If we stay dry, I would I would think maybe they would go back up to 50. You never know. But they are they moved the super late model feature from the third feature to the first feature, and we can see on pit road that that is, that is still the order that they're going to follow as far as Delaware officials are concerned, Gary, because the super late models are up first on pit road next. Yeah, um, either way, no matter what, I mean, we're still going to get one heck of a show in tonight. Uh, you know, and it, and it, from what the radar showed, we didn't get anywhere near what the, the rain that uh, we were expecting. So, I mean, any night at the racetrack is, uh, is a good night. Absolutely. Still a cleanup continues in turn two. As you'll see, the leader, Steve Book, in a 64, go right by that cleanup. There they go. And... Uh, you know, the, the other thing about the safety crew is uh, you got that wreck up there in turn two, um, and they, they were able to respond so fast that they were able to contain that uh, mess uh, from Doug's car. Um, that is completely out of the race groove. So, I mean, you know, we don't have to go through uh, the, the quick dry to get it dried up or, or off the track surface. Um, they'll be good to go right right away. Yeah, and we are hearing word that the bone stock uh, B main or LCQ, however you want to have it, is still going to go, but it's going to go after the super late model feature. So plenty more racing to come. We'll pause for a quick break. More to come from Delaware Speedway. It's Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit StopTrackTragedies.ca. 
Join us September 30th for the Yes I Can Gathering for Girls at Matthews Hall, a safe place for girls 12 to 14 to work through the tough stuff they face every day. Go to www.waymakerinc.ca for more information and to register. It was my daughter's birthday. She was blowing out the candles on her cake when we heard coming from the TV. So we stopped and listened and it helped us get to safety. That's why when I think of I think of my daughter's birthday because now she gets to keep having them. It's turned out to be still dry here. Chris Soros, Gary Adrianson joining us this week. Late model driver here at the Delaware in 2023. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I know he will. A, f a second and a first in your last two features. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah, nice. Good job, Chris. Well, thank you. It helps when we're here almost every week so I can remember <laughs> yeah, that stuff. Right. But sometimes I do forget. Uh, lights off the Delaware Speedway pace car. We're good to go, Gary. So I was just going to say, the nice thing, um, fortunately for Paul Fothergill, who broke out, um, he's right, brought right up back up into the pack. So he now, even though we were only four laps to go, he now has a shot at this. So Steve Book in the 64, Dave Everson, your front row. Getting set, to, we have six laps in the books, four to go. The 86 of Patrick outside row number two. Ferguson on the inside. Fothergill, who got caught for speeding. 21.1 second breakout rule. Is back, as Gary mentioned, tight to the field. Free flag, we're racing with the V8 stocks. And the 45 inside row number three. That's former truck champion Tom Zagarani. We believe it to be. As Steve Book will get out the lead here out of turn two. Here comes Ferguson to the inside of Dave Everson looking for the second spot. And Ferguson will grab that second spot. The 23 trying to come to the front. Speaking of coming to the front, here comes the points leader up to fourth already. The 33 of Paul Fothergill. Gary checking our times for us. So far we're all good. That was the first lap. Oh, I forgot to mention that. I was gonna mention that to you. 64 of Steve Book. Out front on a turn four. Two laps to go this time by. Ferguson really loose on a turn four. As the front four, front five now trying to get away from the sixth place machine now of Zagarani. Here comes Everson in the 15 to the inside of the 23 Ferguson car. To no avail. Father go right there in the 33, right of your screen. White flag for Steve Book in the 64 this time by. Everybody good? Everybody's good. Steve Book with a 193. Nice lap by Joe Lawrence, 18.946. He's yep. trying out his late model. Broke out again. A half, a, half a lap behind the leaders. Two turns, three and four. One final time. Steve Book trying to win it here. Out of turn four. Checkered flag in the air for the 64 is Steve Book. Followed by Ferguson, Everson, Fothergill, and Patrick. Everybody's good. Everybody was good. And then the 45 is Zagarodny. There you see the heat race number two winner, V8 stock class, the 64 of Steve Book. This one I was going to tell you, as you were racing last week, the V8 stocks were racing last week. Jordan Morris did this in a heat race in the feature. He went like gangbusters in the opening lap and was passing cars, three, four, or five cars on the outside because you mentioned that restart or the first lap or the restart is always you're coming slow out of turn four, so you can afford to go faster than you normally would under green for a 21.1 second breakout. That's right. I mean, by the time they take the green, they're already maybe a quarter way down the straightaway, so uh, there's no way, well, maybe not no way, but there, it would be very hard to hit that breakout time on your very first lap because you're just not at full speed yet. So... Right. Uh, by all means, if you can get out there and pass, usually the, the rule is uh, every week Daryl says no passing on the inside um, before turn one. But if Jordan passed everybody on the outside, then uh, it should be good to go. Steve Book, your V8 stock heat race number two winner. On the other side of the break, we'll go feature race with the super late models over two racing on Rogers P and Rev. Blow out all 
all candles before you leave the room or go to bed. Never leave a burning candle unattended. When you go out, don't forget to blow out. Do you have questions about menopause and the menopause journey? We've got you covered. Join us for the Modern Woman's Menopause Show, and hopefully we can give you some answers. And of course, my friends, don't forget to sparkle. on City TV. It blew me away. <laughs> it doesn't even look real. It looks like a special effect. We've done some moves we have never, ever seen. This is an audition I'll never forget. It was amazing. America's Got Talent. All new Tuesdays, 8, 7 central on City TV or stream anytime. to uh, Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV, our Rogers TV YouTube channel, and Rev TV. And we welcome our Rev TV subscribers. Thank you for joining us. Chris Soares, Gary Adrianson alongside this week, getting set for the Touring Series, the Ontario Outlaw Super Late Models, the fastest stock cars in the province, getting set to do, getting set to do battle for 35 laps. So Gary, you've been looking forward to this feature all night. I love these things. These things are so fast. I was telling you earlier that at Jucasa, you can see the vapor trail come off the spoilers of these things. It's it's incredible the speed these have. So That's, the zero. Th go ahead. I was just gonna say, as Jr. was saying earlier, these things have like up well, ab above 600 horsepower. The zero three, Jr. Fitzpatrick piloting that machine tonight. He visited with us earlier tonight. He's on the pole in the zero three. Outside row number one will be the uh, 27, Mike Wilkinson out of Innisfil. The 51 in row two, Ethan Cornea out of Innisfil. Outside row number two is the 22 of Barry's Glenn Watson. Inside row number three is the 72 of Doug Gillespie. Outside row number three, we'll get a number here as it comes by. Looks like the eight machine of uh, Gary McLean out of a con. The in road four is made up inside 73 of uh, Mike Miller out of uh, Caledonia. The 17 also out on the track. That's Brandon Passer out of Innisfil. He'll start shotgun on the field, I believe. Uh, outside row number four is the 56 machine out of turn four. Green flag for racing. Outlaw super late models. Actually, the 88 is Scott Beatty out of Barry outside row number four. Underway with the Ontario Outlaw super late models. The front two will drag race down the back. It's Wilkinson on the outside in the 27. J.R. Fitzpatrick inside in the 0 3. Out of turn number four, they come. Side by side, Fitzpatrick will lead that lap. We're doing 35 with the super late models tonight. And the front two remain side by side. Down the back. Four car length lead on the 22 of Watson in third. And the front two will stay right there. Impressive opening lap by Fitzpatrick in the 0-3. And Wilkinson in the 27. Gary Steele side by side. This is nice tight racing. Like I said, these things are exciting to watch. It's a parade lap at 100 and plus miles an hour. Fitzpatrick with a nose out in front. Wilkinson will fight back in turns one and two. Up the Delaware Hill in two and down the back they go. Now the 27 edges out in front. Fitzpatrick will fight back on the inside here. Here comes the 22 of Watson as well. Speed shot at the start finish line. I knew that was coming but a little late. Let's try it again this time by. Let's hear the roar of the Ontario Outlaw Super Late Models at the start finish line here. J.R. Fitzpatrick has gained the lead. Wilkinson, his tires must be gone or might be gone, Gary. He's dropped back to third quickly. Yeah, there's got to be something going on. I mean, he's just not getting through the corners quite as well either. 
The 22 of Watson up the second now. The uh, eight of McLean. Jair looking really loose coming out of two. The 72 of Gillespie battling McLean back in the field for the fourth position. Give it now to the 72 of Gillespie. Now Fitzpatrick falling back into the clutches now of Glenn Watson in the 22. As the 22's coming to the front. That time by, it was a three-tenths of a second uh, gap. These guys running the same uh, feature distance as you guys do in the late models, 35 laps. They were scheduled for 50, though. So they should have fresher tires for 35, obviously, than a 50-lapper. I would think so. They, But uh, it doesn't take long for things to come up to heat here. Uh, it's just a matter of you don't have as much time to, to wait. The front two, the 0-3, J.R. Fitzpatrick, the 22, Glenn Watson. You're Jared. watching the touring Ontario Super Outlaw Super Late Models. J.R. set his fastest lap of the race so far at an 18-0-1-3. Give us the time on that Gillespie the machine, the 72. He's coming to the front. The 72 that time by was uh, an 18-4-4-5. So Gillespie in the 72 has passed about three cars. Now he's all over the 27 of Mike Wilkinson who was battling for the lead a few laps ago. There's your front pair. Fitzpatrick in the 03. And it's Watson in the 22. The 27 of Wilkinson still trying to hold on to that third spot. A full straightaway behind the leaders. There's the 72 of Gillespie trying to get to the inside. 23 to go this time by. Oh, the 72 goes high in turn number two and barely keeps oh, it off the wall. That was a close one. Gillespie was loose in turn one and caught it on the exit of turn two. And that gives Wilkinson a lot more breathing room alone in third. If you watch the 22 here of Glenn Watson, he's fallen back behind JR a little bit. He's been real loose coming out of, especially coming out of turn four. If you watch him, he'll probably get a little... Yeah, see, uh, the, the back end just swings out on him, so it, it allows JR to drive away. Is that happening in turn two as well? Uh, it's hard to tell from that camera angle, but I'm sure if it's happening in, in turn four, it's let's happening in turn two. Yeah, let's see if that loose condition continues here in turn four again on the 22 of Watson. Yeah, see, yeah. the back just wants to come out. Yeah, absolutely. So... Explain to our, vi our viewers what is a tight condition and what's a loose condition. So a tight condition is when the, the front tires just don't want to grip and the car just tends to drive straight, if you will. Whereas a loose condition is where the back wants to come around and meet the front. So neither neither are fun to drive. What's that? Neither of them are fun to drive. But pretty much a tight, tight machine is a slower machine and a, a loose machine is a faster machine out of control. Usually loose is fast, but uh, there is obviously a very fine line of loose is fast. Absolutely. The front two all by themselves now as the back of the field is now reeling in the 27 of Wilkinson over a straightaway behind the uh, lead pair you see out of turn four. The 72 of Gillespie has rebounded after a loose spill, not really a spill, but went high in the track in turn two, has managed to caught the, uh, catch the 27 again. There's J.R. Fitzpatrick piloting the 0-3 tonight. There's the 72 of Gillespie to the inside of Wilkinson in the 27 for the third position. If you look at the rotor, the front rotors on that 27 machine, they're starting to get red hot. You probably see that in the next shot going into turn two here. Let's stay with the let's watch stay with them. this battle in the turn three. Let's watch the rotors on the 27. Red. There they are. As soon as he applies the brake, you can see when he hits the brake and then lets off, they, they uh, cool right off again. They all these these cars and as well as our own uh, late models, we all have cooling ducts that that blow fresh air right from the nose of the car onto the rotors. Inside 15 laps to go here. On the uh, scoreboard, now 14 on the scoreboard here. As the leaders with a half a lap lead now on the third place runner, the 72 of Doug Gillespie. As J.R. Fitzpatrick negotiating some back marker traffic. The 0-3 now looking pretty loose. Corner four exit. We'll see how J.R. manages turn number two. 
We'll watch JR through turns three and four. We'll watch the zero three for a loose condition here. Couldn't really oh, see yeah, it see, there. Is, well, the Glenn Watson is very loose out of two. I wonder if he's a little tight in the center and when he picks up the throttle, it just wants to kick the, the rear of the car around. Right now, it's a, a battle between the front two to settle it. They have a, over a half a lap lead on the third place machine. A lot of times when you have a, uh, a they call it a tight center loose off, is mean you've got you've got too much wheel in the car in the center that, to make it rotate. Uh, which, by the time you pick up the throttle, the back is trying to catch up to the front and it just wants to go around, which what's, I think is what's happening here with Watson. Oh, we got a smoker on the back stretch, and he's going to come into the pit area, we'll so stay. he'll get off the track. And we got a caution. And a caution is on the speed, so we'll check for fluid. That's the 51 of Ethan Cornea. And so I guess we're going to check the track to see if there's any fluid laid down from that 51 machine. Caution on the speedway. And thank you, says the driver of the 72, Doug Gillespie. That half a track disadvantage is now nothing as the field will restack them with 11 to go. I was gonna tell you, our, our, and our, for our viewers, if you're looking from Delaware Speedway from above, it's shaped as an egg. So the distance between turns one and two are shorter than the distance between turns three and four. Now, Gary, what do you, how do you like your car set up? Do you like it to work turns one and two better or work turns three and four better. Obviously, you're carrying more speed through three and four than one and two. I myself, I like mine to handle a little bit better out of one and two. I get a, a really good drive off of two. Um, but three and four, there's with the new concrete years ago when the DeMellos first bought the track, they put that lower groove of concrete in there and uh, it's giving you a little bit more. Um, uh, a, a little bit better a line and a lot more room for an inside line outside line whereas one and two uh, if you get out of the groove and you have to go through under race conditions not just a restart but under race conditions one and two are a lot harder to navigate now uh, stemming off that discussion when you're coming out of turn we're going into turn two you're going up a hill and then down out of turn two down the back whereas turn four you're pretty much level with turn three, maybe coming downhill just a little bit. You, where, what, what exit do you want to be better at? Exit of turn two or four? Both. I mean, there, there's no. Uh, you want to be good at exit both cars because I mean, a lot of times if you can't get out of the corner, uh, a lot of times, especially in the late models, when you watch a lot, most passing is done on the exit of the corners. Where if a guy is pushing a little uh, too much, you know, you can get a good drive and, and come under underneath them and get the uh, line going into three or or into two. You just got to get a nose in. Under caution in the Ontario Outlaw Super Late Model feature will more to come. Delaware Speedway Racing on Roger P and Red P. For over 50 years, White's Rental has been providing local contractors and members of the DIY crowd with professional quality lawn and garden tools, aerial lifts, and construction equipment. White's Rental, we have the right equipment to make your project easier. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks, and it shattered her world. <laughs> Welcome to Treat Yourself.
brought to you, or not brought to you, but uh, on Rogers TV, Rogers YouTube channel, and Rev TV. Chris Orr is Gary Adrianson. Uh, top of the tower here inside V8 stock, or sorry, V8 stock. What am I doing? Ontario Outlaw Super Late Model <laughs> feature. Hello and welcome back, Sorzy. Welcome to Delaware Speedway. Well, they're Eleven definitely V8s to, in these, go. but what's that? They're definitely V8s in these, but they yeah. are not stock. <laughs> uh, Eleven to go here. There you see the white flag from Scott Mack in the flag stand. Lights off the Delaware uh, pace car. Uh, 11 to go out of a 35 lap feature for this uh, visiting touring series. So this time JR is elected to take the outside, whereas on the, the beginning of the race he took the inside. Yeah, so this should be interesting. They're doing a choose rule. Uh, forgot to mention to you, doing a choose rule tonight for the super late models where they each get to choose the lane they want to restart in when they get to the start finish line with one to go before restart. Out of turn four, 11 to go. We're racing with the super late models. J.R. Fitzpatrick outside the 0-3. It's the 22 of Glenn Watson on the inside, and Fitzpatrick off to a great start. The 27 of Wilkinson, or sorry, Gillespie. No, that is Wilkinson. Wilkinson yep. Not off to a good start. Gillespie in the 72 to third. The eight is Gary McLean in fourth. And 72 of Gillespie, one of the stronger cars before he went to caution, but was a half a lap behind the leaders. And it's for sale, Chris, as you can see. Oh, it is for sale. And if you're looking for something to do. Yeah. Get me in a bone stock. Uh, <laughs> get me in a bone stock first to get used to this stuff. Super late models, eight to go next time by. You want to hear how these cars roar at the half mile? Listen, this time by. J.R. Fitzpatrick at the point in the 0-3, being chased down by the 22 of Glenn Watson, the 72, Doug Gillespie in third. The eight is Gary McLean in fourth, the 27 of uh, Wilkinson rounding out the top five. But right now, the battle of the front two resumes after a restart with 11 to go. We got six and a half to go. We're 28 laps into this race, Chris, and Jared just set his fastest lap of the race again with an 18.002. And why is that? Why so late into the feature do you set the fastest time? I, it, it's cooler air. I mean, they, they, they got a little bit of a caution there, so, I mean, things may have cooled down. So a combination of a, a, combination of a restart, yep. a cooler track means more grip, racing fans. It is significantly cooler since we started the evening. Five to go this time by J.R. Fitzpatrick in a 0-3. The 22 right there trying to chase him down. That's Barry Ontario's Glenn Watson in the uh, double deuce in tow. In the turn number three they go. Closes in under braking. About a car and a half length lead now separates the two. We got a new third place driver. That's Gary McLean in the eight. The 70, oh, the 72 is off. No, he's still there. He just dropped the fourth. And Glenn Watts is definitely on the move. He just broke the his first car, first and only car to be sub 18 at a 17.927. Again, fastest lap of the race. And he's coming, trying to track down J.R. Fitzpatrick. Three to go. Gillespie has dropped the fourth. Now it's McLean up to third. Right now, well back of the front pair. And there you see the front pair right there. Coming around turn four, popsicle sticks in the air from the flag stand, two to go for the 0-3 of J.R. Fitzpatrick at the point. J.R. breaks 18 seconds with a 17.949. They're getting faster as the laps are winding down here. Fitzpatrick out to a six car length lead down the back. Looking at the flag stand, white flag on the speedway here for the 0-3, J.R. Fitzpatrick. He won the uh, Outlaw Super Late Model Championship in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, and He's the, won, Don B uh, the B Biederman Memorial Race in 2018. He's running other divisions as well, but tonight he's going to win in a super late model. Checkered flag in the air for the 0-3 of J.R. Fitzpatrick. Glenn Watson will come home second, followed by Gary McLean, Doug Gillespie, and Mike Wilkinson, your top five as the Ontario Outlaw Super Late Models visit Delaware Speedway for another time here in 2023. A very m familiar place to be in the Pennzoil Victory Lane, J.R. Fitzpatrick. And it looks like we got the top three coming around here. No, nope, maybe not. I think he has won in every class that he's ever driven, any type of car. If I'm not mistaken, he is running one of Chris Lawrence's bone stocks 
either did or is coming up. It might be, it might be the pumpkin smasher. That could be. I, I, or there's I also remember a, seeing something about it on Facebook. There's, also, remember what there's also a bone stock invitational on Labor Day weekend. It's a three-day event here at Delaware Speedway, DelawareSpeedway.com for uh, ticket information. But also there's a pumpkin smasher in October. Uh, Jay Dewar that I you raced that. with, he's yep. brought, bringing out former late model champ Scott Lindsay is going to drive a bone stock. Yep. And, and if I'm not and, mistaken, so is Steve Robley. Steve Robley. Pete uh, Vanderwist is going to be in Wayne, one as well. Wayne Pilkey's coming yes, out of I retirement. Uh, Jay Christie's coming to race no the bone stock. It, Jay Christie. Oh, wow. it's going to be crazy. Momentarily, we're going to send it down trackside to hear from JR uh, with uh, Jordan Modsley. And let's try send it trackside to Jordan right now. JR, great run there. First of all, how much fun was that? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. These are by far my favorite cars. Uh, they're just a ton of horsepower. It took me a while to get used to it because I spun out in practice. Like I said earlier, I don't know the last time I spun out on my own, but uh, a lot of fun. I got to thank the Passer Racing Bunch, Dario, for letting me be a substitute. Uh, the car was good. I knew Glenn was coming. I was trying to protect the right rear as much as I could. We were getting a little loose, but a lot of fun. What went into that thought process on uh, taking the outside on that restart? Uh, Dario was spotting and he told me Glenn was struggling a bit on the bottom and so I knew if I could just keep it wound up on top we'd get him and uh, obviously with the APC races we know that the top's the way to go for a few laps. I mean the 27 car, uh, Mike Wilkinson did a hell of a job on the top there, it was trying to be smooth because something to get used to is there's so much shelf on these you can't really see but we had a good battle there at the beginning. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully the weather uh, stays clear and we can have some good races. Let it from green to checker, J.R. Fitzpatrick, your winner in the Outlaw. J.R. Fitzpatrick, late. the winner tonight in the Disney Ontario Outlaw Super Late Models. So when we come back, we'll feature racing with the Bone Stock. In other words, we'll be racing on Roger TV and Red TV. When you choose Pizza Hut, you're supporting a local, family-owned, and operated business. We've been serving our community for over 35 years and take great pride in what we do. From our family to yours, thank you for choosing Pizza Hut and supporting local. Monday. My name is Phil Sinfara with Pillin Nonprofit as Program Leader of Birds Capital, and I am this week's guest of Pollinating Purpose. As each day passes, we have one guarantee. The sun will rise in the morning and set in the evening. No matter where you are on this earth, there is a sunrise and a sunset. No matter the weather, the pollution, the clouds, there is a sunrise and a sunset. No matter what you do, like the sun, you will also have a time to rise and a time to set. Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Chris Soares and late model driver Gary Adrianson joining me this week. Uh, quickly before we go to Bone Stocks, you heard that J.R. Fitzpatrick, winner of the uh, Outlaw Super Late Model feature, he said, well, you know, and my experience with the late models over the last couple years here at Delaware, uh, the outside is the way to go for the few first few laps. That bodes well for what they did here at the half mile to bring that second group back in, Gary. Yeah, once the new ownership took over, they repaved the kind of the, the racing groove on the straightaways and then the uh, upper groove on the uh, in the corners so you know they left the concrete and went I think one one lane above the concrete and it has made for some incredible racing and and has put a second lane in this track to to create that racing and uh, it is it is great to great to have and we're thankful for the new ownership for and everything that they've put in since they've uh, taken over here and my apologies, before we went to break race fans, I said the bone stock feature was on the way next. That is incorrect. This is the B main for the bone stocks or the LCQ. They started calling it the B main last week uh, to ensure that every bone stock who came to uh, the racetrack on any particular week would be allowed to race uh, in either an A main or a B main. Not sure how many are going to advance from this uh, uh, B main, but we're uh, hoping to find out very shortly. We have our... Uh, inside reporter 
trying to chalk something down here in the booth beside us, but the 15 laps, the scheduled the distance here for the B main. The 24 qualified thus far. And 10 from this one, Gary. So 10 is going to make a 34 lap uh, A main feature, or 34 car A main. Well, that'll be, it's, <laughs> these bone stocks never disappoint. I mean, when anytime they're on the track, it's always tight racing. And again, it's a beginner class, but you have got, again, exactly beginner class uh, drivers from Chris Lawrence renting cars out, learning to, to race and uh, make their way around the track. And you've got guys like Jeremiah Rabideau and Joe Lawrence that race in this, who have, you know, years of experience. All right, so 10 out of this one is gonna advance to the A main the here. 15 laps. Yep, 15 laps, the uh, scheduled distance. The 78, uh, Justin Culver, outside row number one, I think, what is that, the 58 or the 68? At, uh, oh, it's the... I think, is that a 52? The 52? The 52? Is it a 52? You see Cassie Howard in the 59. 69 right now in the transfer spot, trying to get the number on that uh, pole car. As they come out of turn four, it's the 52. You're right, Gary. Green flag, we're racing. Bone stock, B main, underway. And the uh, 52, Donovan Clark. Donovan Clark, that's right, had a good showing last week. Grabs the lead early. Culver in the 78, right behind him in second spot. Stared up to third. Joe kicks on the Wonder Bread number 12 machine, trying to get to the inside of Starrett for third. And Clark will lead the opening lap. Culver looks to the inside. Clark now goes high in turn number two. Culver with a bit of a run. They'll drag race down the back for the lead. Justin Culver on the inside. Donovan Clark on the outside. Eight car lengths behind them. Another side-by-side -side battle for third with the kicks and Starrett going at it. Meanwhile, at the front, it's Culver to the inside of Clark looking for the lead in the Origin White 78. And Justin Culver now at the point. Joe Kicks has advanced past Starrett for third. Cassie Howard trying to make her way through the field as well. She's up to sixth now. As Culver will lead the field back to the strike, 12 to go. So far, Jillian Hills is in the transfer spot in the four car. Yes. There it is on screen, Chris. The yellow and white number four car. That is uh, the car in 10th spot on the track. And the 07 of Jack Dixon trying to grab that transfer spot. They have a good 15, 20 car length advantage on the next few cars, so it's up to them to settle it. Meanwhile, Culver extending his lead at the front over Donovan Clark. Joe kicks all by himself in third spot. Starrett under pressure now from the 59 of Cassie Howard. And Howard will go to the outside of Starrett out of turn number four in the 59 machine. Looking for that fourth position. And Cassie fighting for fifth place here. Starrett fights back on the inside. Len Starrett in the 88. Cassie Howard in the 59. Meanwhile, uh, Collison, or Collison in the 11 has dropped down to the transfer spot. In the 11, in 10th spot, back in the field. I love seeing Cassie doing as well as she is. She has definitely improved over the years that she's been running in the bone stock. Absolutely. And it, it, it shows every time she's on the track. Jack Dixon for the 10th spot. Right there in the 07, trying to grab uh, the 10th spot from the 11 of Collison. The 11 has it, the 07 wants it. Nobody else in contention behind them. So it's between that pack of four. Seven, or eight, ninth, and 10th, and 11th spot right there. With seven to go next time by. The leader into some put, traffic now. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, he's just going to say he's putting cars down a lap already. He's got about a, a half a straightaway lead on the 52 of Donovan Clark here. Yeah, the leader's in the traffic now at the back end of the lead lap. There you see the battle for the transfer spot. 
The 11 and the 4 are battling for 9th and 10th. The 07 is Jack Dixon in the 11th position, trying to get to the transfer. And the 10 is Ian Levac. So that's seven, eight, or sorry, that's eight, nine, 10, and 11th positions right there. The 07 of Jack Dixon on the outside looking in. Dixon to the high side now of the four machine Gillian of Hills. Gillian Hills. Meanwhile, the leader takes another lap, five to go for the 78 of Justin Culver. Donovan Clark staying with them. The front two are all by themselves. Two separate battles at the front of the field for two cars and the transfer spot for four cars. Donovan Clark has really reeled Justin in. Hope as he gets caught by some lap traffic there. Yeah, it's, it, it's all a matter of where you catch that traffic, isn't it, Gary? It sure is. And they can make or break a race for you. That transfer spot battling very heavy in traffic they're all in traffic now the 07 of dixon has gotten by gills in the four car jack dixon now in the 10th spot or is that yep yep jack dixon is in the transfer spot so the 07 there's the four of jillian gills outside looking in now in the 11th position and i believe Oh, it's Levac getting caught up behind the 28 machine. And we're getting reeled back in by the four car. Two laps to go this time by. Leader just took it. A half a lap ahead of this uh, transfer spot battle. There's the 78 of Justin Culver. Donovan Clark, five car lengths behind him. Front two all by themselves. 28 slow on the back stretch there going in. He should be able to get off the track safely here, so we should stay green. Yeah, the, 20, the white. 28 will duck down on the pit lane. Here comes the white flag for the 78 of Culver. Right now, the 10th spot goes to the 07 of Jack Dixon. And Dixon entering turn three. About four car lengths ahead of the 11th position to Jillian Gills. There's the leader. Now here's the transfer spot right there. The 07 of Dixon in the 10th position. Five car lengths ahead of the four. There's Justin Culver coming out of four to, to the checker flag for uh, B main win. Checker flag for the 78 of Culver. Donovan Clark will finish second. Let's go to the transfer spot. They're in turn three right now. Dixon getting held up by Levesque in the 10. Here comes the four of Gills. Trying to make one last effort. And it's not going to be enough. Jack Dixon will be the final transfer spot in the 10th position, moving to the A main in the bone stock division. Culver family, no stranger to Victory Lane with big brother uh, Trevor Culver. Actually, I think he's a uh, younger brother. Trevor's younger than Justin. We've got a black I flag think. being shown to the 71 at the line, but the race is over. I should know this. You should know. That's, why, should we, know that's why we get you on the broadcast, I'm, I'm pretty sure Trevor's the younger brother of Justin. Well, I'm sure if you're, I believe you're right, but I'm sure if you're wrong, you'll get a message Oh, shortly. I'm sure Trevor will be messaging me anytime now, or Sue will. Well, Sue's probably down there with Justin. There's the 78, uh, winner of the uh, bone stock B main and advancing to the A main. Coming up uh, later tonight, the 78 of Justin Culver. When we come back, it'll be the feature race, I believe, for the V8 stock class. More to come. Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Red TV. My name's Ranger M. I love to knowledge share, and that's just what I'm going to do with you. So come on, let's go learn with Ranger M. Welcome to Treat Yourself. It's me, Giovanni Petiti, the host of the RTV Quiz Show, the hottest show on television. It's the hilarious quiz show where you, the viewers, play for valuable, non-existent prizes. It's got great trivia, fun facts, and a lot of laughs, all blended together in a perfect cocktail of edutainment. 
So join us Wednesdays at 7.30 right here on Rogers TV. Nice. Welcome back at Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Chris Soares and Gary Adrianson. Coming up uh, this Thursday for you country fans, Jake Owens in town. It's uh, London's Rock the Park presents Delaware Knights here at 5 o'clock p.m. this Thursday. Jake Owens is the headliner. Josh Ross and the Rec Laws will be also here opening up for Jake Owen, gonna be a fantastic concert. Uh, and then a week from tonight, Gary's back behind the uh, wheel of his 55 late model, as the late models will go for 75 laps. Next Friday night, the Super Stocks will do a twin feature, double feature night for the Super Stocks. Next Friday night, uh, we'll be on the air with you on Rogers TV at 7.30 p.m. next Friday night. Uh, gonna be a good uh, show, Gary. And I'll probably mention this uh, when we sign off tonight, but uh, good luck next week, my friend. Thanks, bud. I appreciate that. I take all the luck I can get. All right, getting set for the V8 stock feature. Set for 25 laps here. This is our second of the three features. And it'll be Jordan Morris at the point in this uh, division with a 21.1 second breakout time. If you circle the Delaware half mile faster than 21.1, race control will nail you for speeding. You'll have to do a stop and go on the back stretch, which means you come to a complete stop and then you start again and resume the race. If you're uh, 21.1 seconds or slower, you are good to go and they'll run for 25 laps. It'll be, uh, as mentioned, Jordan Morris inside row one as the uh, pole car. Something I just noticed is we uh, get a look at uh, Fothergill when he goes by again. He's got a for sale sign in the back window of that car. If anybody really? wants to go out here and uh, buy a winning car and go racing right out of the gate. There it is. Yeah, that's for sale. Uh, for sale. Contact yeah. Paul Fothergill. He's not on Facebook, but his son Mike is, and uh, Mike can give you all the details. That's two cars we've seen tonight for sale. Outside row number one will be the 2M Mark McDonald out of Lucan, Ontario. The Jordan's from London. Inside row number two, the 72 of uh, Bothwell's Chad Clutterbuck. Outside row two, uh, Steve Book piloting the 64 tonight for Book Motorsports. Then it's the uh, 23 of uh, Jerseyville's Jeff Ferguson will start inside row number three. Alongside West Lorne, Ontario's Dave Everson in the 15. Then the aforementioned Paul Fothergill, the points leader in the 33. Uh, Paul's from London. And then the uh, 86 hometown driver, Caden Patrick, outside row number four from Delaware, Ontario. The 45, we believe to be Tom Zagger Rodney, we believe to be. In yeah. the uh, 45 car, might be Tom Zagarani, the pilot of the, the former truck champion. We think it's Tom Zagarani. I saw it on Facebook. There was something about it today. So I don't know that for fact that it is, but there was talk about it. And I, whether it actually happened or not, I'm not positive. Out of turn number four, looking for green. They got it. We're racing with the VA stocks. Once again, we'll get Gary to monitor times here. We have a couple of late models on the uh, track as well, just doing some hot laps. They'll stay away from the field as the field will rumble into turn number three. It's McDonald on the high side looking for the lead. Steve Book right there. Morris is loose out of turn number four. McDonald will lead that lap. Morris to the inside. Book on the high side of Clutterbuck. Here comes Everson in the 15, and then the points leader in the black 33. Father Gills coming to the front. The front seven all together now as they'll work turns three and four. This will be the first lap under full green conditions, and Gary will check times as we go. Everybody is good. Two by two by two, the front six side by side down the back. Morris on the inside, McDonald on the high side. Then it's Clutterbuck and Book, Fothergill, Avison, and Ferguson, all seven, all right there out of turn four for another time.
Everybody good, thumbs up from Gary Adrianson. And that's the thing with this 21.1 second breakout time race fans, they all stay together. It's a full pack racing feel here with the V8 stocks under this, under this rule. Let's hear them as they hit the start finish. That's the thing, Gary, with this rule, as mentioned, uh, it's pack racing, so to speak. It sure is. In, in, in theory, they, the entire field should be running around bumper to bumper, door to door the entire time. Out of turn four, they come. Morris on the inside, McDonald on the high side. Three wide now! Father Gill to the inside of Clutterbuck. And Father Gill will try and stay there. Clutterbuck up into Everson. Everson off the pace as the 72 got it into the 15. And Everson will lose some spots. Now Father Gill will challenge the front threesome. Morris, McDonald, and now Steve Book up there as well, still. Joined by the points leader in the black 33, that's Paul Fothergill. We, everybody is good. We are barely making it into the 21 second range. We're all, the 21 nines is the fastest. They're coming up on the first of two late models circling the track. Joe Lawrence in the 78. Joe sees the pack coming, so he'll pick up some speed now as the leaders will hit the stripe again. There's Dave Everson, front left tire down in the 15. After contact with the 72, the front four put a blanket on him down the back. Father Gill in the 33 looking very racy. So is the 64 of Steve Book. Ferguson's trying to stay in touch in the fifth position. All good. Everybody good. Gary continuing to check that time for us. 21.1 or slower, you're good. 21 flat or better, you're done. And it's a stop and go on the back stretch. Oh, McDonald will lead that lap. Morris fights back on the inside. Book and Fothergill all right there. The front four still all together. Ferguson in the 23 right there. There's the 93 of J Broom. And the 1M of Sean McGlynn there as well. Sean's broken out though. Oh, he has broken out? Yeah, Sean, Sean broke out. I mean, he's in the late models. I didn't really mention that one. Father Gill, oh, contact! The 73 of Morris up into the 64 of Book creates a three wide situation. And Book is the loser of that battle. He'll lose a couple of spots. We're still good by a long shot. But the side by side battle for the lead is no longer as McDonald will grab the lead, followed by Morris. Now Fothergill up to the third spot. Ferguson battling Fothergill on the outside. Dave Everson returning to the track in the 15. Everybody's good. Lots of green on Gary's uh, app there, signifying an individual car's fastest lap, but not faster than 21.1. No fastest lap so far is a, a 21.5. 12 to go this time by as Morris has come back to the inside of McDonald now. And the front pair have distanced themselves for now from the 33 of Paul Fothergill. Halfway through this V8 stock feature race. And the front six or seven all together. McGlynn in the number one late model to the inside there, the 64 of Book. Father Gill looks three wide again and elects not to continue on as he tucks back in. Steve Book will come to the high side. Morris was loose there out of turn four. McDonald had the opportunity to go the inside in turn one but chose to go high and let Morris back in. He was fully in front of Morris at the stripe. Yeah, this is this is exciting. I mean, one mistake, and, and unfortunately, they don't know that they can go any faster to pass these guys. We got a black flag. Black flag shown to the one of McGlynn. I guess he did break out and he never adhered to the black flag, Gary. Yeah, he definitely broke out. He broke out a long time yep. ago. He's going through his stop and go right now on the back stretch. So the one out of the scenario now, the front four, Still all together. Morris, McDonald, Father Gillen, Book. 
Eight to go. There's Book back Lynn up the third. Restarting. Off the back stretch. The leader is up the hill in turn two and down the back another time. The 93 of Jerry, uh, Jerry Broom has moved to fifth spot now ahead of Ferguson. And the 93 trying to join this battle up front. Still good. Everybody good at the front of this field. The front five all together as Ferguson got loose. He's lost touch with the leaders now. Here's Brooke to the inside and three wide. Thread the needle. Three wide on a turn four. Steve Books forced the issue. He is good. Oh, and it was his fastest lap as we could tell, but he was three one hundredths of a second off the breakout, so he's fine. And still back to third. Steve Book, will he try it again? No, McDonald says no way, not this time. As Steve Book's trying to go through the meat and the sandwich here. Everybody good. Five to go. Steve Book in the 64 looking very racy now down the back. The front three kind of getting away from Fothergill a little bit now. Morris to the inside. McDonald's still on the high side and in the 64 of Book. Steve Book wants to go three wide. You can <laughs> see it every lap, Gary. <laughs> Caution on the speedway. We got a smoker in turn number four. It's the four car of Wheaton. He'll get just in time to duck inside the tire at turn four to get on pit road. But we'll go caution on the speedway. That is really good heads up driving. You know, a, a, a guy knows that he's got, he's probably dropped a motor and he got off the track as quick as possible instead of dragging around the whole track. And yeah. he, he kept it low on the, in the inside at three and four as well. Absolutely. Good for him. Good job by uh, Maidstone's uh, Kevin Wheaton in that uh, four machine. As we go caution on the speedway with four to go here. In the V8 stock feature. And we'll uh, reset the field. Looks like McDonald might have been the uh, leader of record last completed lap under green. So he'll get, uh, we'll get a replay here, Gary. There he is, take us through oh, that. Oh yeah, it looks like he probably dropped a motor just just before the Pennzoil board or Extreme Marine there. And, and good and, heads uh, up here. Like I said, good heads up driving. You realize he's smoking and you can smell it. And he pulled off the track right away. Good heads up driving. Good job by the four of Kevin Wheaton under caution here. Four to go, V8 stock. Feature race from the half mile. Delaware, Ontario. Delaware TV race on Rogers TV and Red TV. Carbon monoxide is a deadly gas you can't see, smell, or taste. Homes with fuel burning appliances and or attached garages must have working CO alarms installed outside all sleeping areas. Don't let the silent killer get you. Install working CO alarms today. Jeff from Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff here, and we are back for another incredible season of Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. We're gonna tour some amazing backyards. We're gonna meet up with some great folks, and we're gonna cook some incredible food. Join us Thursdays at 7.30 for Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. Jeff from Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff here, and we're back for another fantastic season of Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. We're gonna cook some great food with some really great folks. We're gonna use some unique barbecues, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. As always, I'm gonna be wearing some pretty unique shirts as well. Watch Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff Thursdays at 7.30. At Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Uh, Chris Horace, Gary Anderson under red flag conditions. And why? This is why. Right there at the Crown Body Maintenance sign, you see that stripe all the way into turn three. This is actually uh, kind of neat because it's actually the racing line. And down in turn number three, it'll come all the way through turns three and into turn four. It'll stay on the track. This is all speedy dry all the way around to past the entrance to pit road. And right there is where they're going to stop it. And that is an oil spill from the four car. 
and they're going to have to lay that uh, that uh, track dry down, kind of sweep it up a little bit, and kind of clean it up a little bit and get the cars rolling again. So under red flag conditions here at Delaware Speedway, more to come on the other side of the break. It's Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Red TV. distracted and that you're cooking unattended. Stand by your pan and look while you cook. As each day passes, we have one guarantee. The sun will rise in the morning and set in the evening. Like the sun, you will also have a time to rise and a time to set. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. Welcome back to uh, Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Chris Horace, Gary Aderson back under yellow flag conditions. And we have an update on the Culver birth order, right? <laughs> yeah, Trevor, uh, I figured Trevor was watching. Uh, he, he did confirm that Justin is not only older, but wiser. But uh, Trevor, is, his wife Maddie and his mom Sue are cheering Justin on from Innisfil today. Trevor races in the Quick Wick Series tomorrow night at Sunset Speedway. All right. And good luck to uh, Trevor for sure tomorrow. Four to go here when we restart with the V8 stock so class. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV. So proud to bring that to you. Whether you're watching on uh, Rogers TV or Rogers TV YouTube channel or our uh, Rev TV viewers, uh, always uh, glad to have you on board. DelawareSpeedway.com for all your uh, ticket information. You got a big three-day blockbuster Labor Day weekend here at the Half Mile coming up at the end of this month. Uh, three action-packed nights, including... Uh, the Pinnies Series, the top stock car series in Canada, with uh, names like Andrew Ranger and DJ Kennington. They're running at Oshwegan? I think so. And if I'm not mistaken, is uh, Ken Schrader running in that? Really? I think. I didn't know that. Former uh, flag man here at Delaware Speedway, Rob Sharp, the race director for the Pinnies Series for the last three years. Maybe he's not. And Rob's been doing a great job. I actually talked with Rob this week. Uh, doing a great job uh, race directing that. That's the third of three days. All the details, DelawareSpeedway.com. Lights off the uh, Delaware Speedway pace car getting set. Four to go here. V8 stock feature. Mark McDonald is the control car choosing the outside. Go ahead, Gary. Actually, I think Kenny Schrader's running in the APC series race That's tomorrow. Right. That's what it was. Yes. Jordan Morris on the inside. Steve Book, row two inside. Paul Father got the points to their outside, row two. Out of turn four. Looking at the flag stand. Looking for green. They got it. We're racing green. What a start by the two Emma McDonald. And Fothergill trying to get to the outside too. We'll see if anyone does what Morris did last week and go full out pretty much on this opening lap because they start so slow. Fothergill trying to do that very thing on the outside as the leaders will come out of turn four. Three to go this time by. And Jerry Brooms off the pace. Oh, look oh, out! Boy. The two of them McDonald rode the wall. He rode the wall out of turn number four but keeps it going. We're still green. But he lost the lead. Father Gill to the inside. Here comes Steve Book. McDonald fighting back on the outside. If he comes back to win this, my goodness. And he's fighting back on the outside. I'll go against Morris. We got smoke everywhere, collisions everywhere. Everybody good on the 21.1 second breakout, Everybody's I believe. Still good, yep. McDonald fighting back after he rode the wall. Allied General Lee and the Dukes of Hazard on a turn four two laps ago. They'll look to the white flag coming out of turn four, this time by. Here's the replay out of turn four. 
Bottom right to the replay. Look at the 2M. High on the wall. He'll ride the wall there. And he kept it going. Down the back one final time. Morris on the inside. McDonald on the high side. They'll settle it. Through turns three and four. They're both around oh. in front of the field. Book to the inside. And Steve Book's going to win it at the line. Wow. What a finish. Steve Book out of nowhere. Where did he come from? Well, he came from third on the inside around the wreck to win the V8 feature. That's incredible. Again, you never give up, never stop, especially in a race like this. Contact between the two leaders, Morris and McDonald. Here's the replay, Gary. Yeah, they made contact, and the back just came right around and, and got in front of Morris. It's, and Steve Book just, just barely sneaks by on the inside. Steve Book, if we can, if we can get to Chris and Jake to show us that again, Steve Book actually ripped the front bumper off the 2M McDonald machine as he came through on the inside groove as he pulls into victory lane. And we'll hear from Steve momentarily. What a finish. It's the first time, I believe, this year in the V8 stock class that the two front cars at the stripe with one lap to go did not win it. It was the third place car. Here's the replay again. Contact between the 73 and the 2M right there. Watch the 64 on the inside rip off the front cover. There it is, yep. And come on to the strike to win it. Steve Book in the 64. He's out of the car. Let's hit a track side to Jordan Mosley. Uh, Steve, excellent run by you. First of all, take me back. We'll, we'll go to the scoreboard on the back stretch. What happened from there through three and four? Well, that, with that stage ride down in the corner, um, the lap before, Paul was down there. He got sideways. Jordan was sideways in it. It, it really wasn't cleaned up that well down there. It was better in the second lane. And then uh, Jordan and the 2M got together there because they both kind of went sideways in there. I went to the inside. They just clipped my rear tire there and jumped the back end. But Paul had to woe up for both of them or I wouldn't have won it. I mean, all four of us are running pretty much right on the button there. So How much fun is it running like that side by side, all you guys right there together? It's, uh, it's interesting for sure. I mean, you're just waiting for somebody to make a little mistake, but you really don't know how fast you're going. And I know you got a lot of people you want to thank down here. Well, I like to thank my family for sure. They, they give me a lot of time and uh, support with this and uh, my crew and uh, all my sponsors. I don't have any on this car because it's uh, sort of, a, sort of a, a car that we let anybody drive, you know. Steve Book down here in Pennzoil Victory Lane in the 64. He's your duck Stock skater. Feature the 64 of his Steve Book. When we come back from break, we'll go feature racing with 34 bone stocks. It's Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Don't get caught unprepared this summer. White's Rental is your one-stop shop for lawnmower tune-ups and repairs. You can visit us at our new location, 785 Little Simcoe Street. I'm Mike Jack. I've broken multiple world records for eating some of the world's hottest peppers. Now, I'm challenging London restaurants to make some of the world's hottest food. Watch Jack Up the Heat Mondays at 5.30. I just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, thank all the dedicated volunteers uh, throughout the, uh, the summer and winter months and through the years for all your hard work and your dedication to uh, giving up your weekends to uh, come out and uh, be part of uh, the volunteer program here at Rogers. So I just, again, just want to say uh, thank you very, very, very much. Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Chris Orr is uh, Gary Adrianson, uh, top of the tower, as we finish uh, Victor Lane uh, ceremonies after the V8 stock uh, feature race. The winner, the 64 of uh, Steve Book. As we get set to uh, go feature racing for 25 laps with the bone stock division, I think 34 cars ready to do battle. 
And uh, as you see, the bone stocks lined up behind Victory Lane. There's the 0 3 at length for the 50 of Givens. Uh, two cars behind Givens. Very interesting, uh, Gary, as the top two in the points. The double zero of Jay Cox, the five of Jeremiah Rabideau. We heard from Jeremiah earlier tonight. We'll start. Uh, what are we looking at? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, uh, 15, and 16. They'll start side by side uh, in 15th and 16th uh, place here at the top two, separated by just two as the points championship continues to get heated here in August. Well, and they're pretty much the a couple of the fastest cars in the field. Uh, there they are on screen. And, uh, you know, for both of them, all they have to do is keep each other in their windshield or directly in their mirror. Uh, you know, when your point's racing, I mean, that's what it's all about. You don't necessarily have to beat the rest of the field. You just have to beat that guy. Yeah, but at, at one point or another, that five is going to want this double zero in the rear view by at least one spot because every spot is a point. And right now, after the heat races earlier tonight, uh, Jeremiah in the five sits two points back of Jay in the double zero as we go ahead. Also to, uh, if, if they can get up to the front, there's also bonus points. There's a bonus point for leading a lap, which can go to as many drivers, you know, every, we could have 30, 35 different, or 25 different drivers get a bonus point essentially. Yep. Um, there's one bonus point for whoever leads the most laps. And I think you get a bonus point for uh, winning the race as well. Right. So, I mean, even if they finish one, two, they, you could still stretch more than just one point. Absolutely. Late to consultation there at the uh, window net of the five, uh, Jeremiah Rabbitoh machine. We just saw a crew member come up to uh, Jeremiah and quickly uh, exit the area as we're about to let the pace vehicle roll out here with the uh, bone stocks for 25 laps as they roll out so we'll take another break here when we come back we'll go racing with the bone stocks it's Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV I'm Wendell Clark with a word about winning we all know it takes a team effort in any sport and with any challenge you can be a part of the winning team that shuts out impaired driving whether you're out on the town or just hanging out with friends drink responsibly. Always have a plan for a safe ride home for yourself, your family, and your friends. You'll be helping to shut out impaired driving. Visit ArrivaLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. I'm Mike Jack. I've broken multiple world records and won several competitions for eating some of the world's hottest peppers. Now, I'm challenging London restaurants to make some of the world's hottest food. Yeah, you speak <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how are you doing, man? Uh-oh. Watch Jack Up the Heat Mondays at 5.30. At Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. Uh, Chris Orr is uh, Gary Adrian from our late model class joining us uh, this evening. We're set for the final race, final feature of this evening. It is the Bone Stock class for 25 laps. We were talking on commercial. Uh, Gary, uh, Chris Lawrence, we talked with his brother Joe earlier tonight, Chris Lawrence, and that stable of Bone Stocks from the Lawrence uh, stable. He brings the cars in a hauler uh, and then has to take them home at the end of the night. Yeah, what well, he was saying, it takes him sometimes till 2 o'clock in the morning to get uh, all the cars back to his shop. I mean, thankfully, he lives not that far from a track. I mean, you can almost just stick some temporary lighting on them and, uh, and, a, and, a, plate. and a plate and drive them home. <laughs> All right, so we're getting set here. What a great field it looks like here. White flag on the speedway already. As we do see just over the horizon in turn number two, some cloud is coming in, a big mass of clouds coming, but we should be able to get, if these guys behave, guys and gals behave, we should be able to get 25 laps in and to get a winner here out of this bone stock class. It'll be Tyler Wheel in the 85, the pole car, Colin Williams outside row number one. Clausen and Jenner row Wheel number two. Row and we look to the points battle. That's uh, eight rows back. Cox and Rabideau side by side to start. Lights off the Delaware Speedway pace car getting set to do battle here. Cox out of Dorchester and the five. Jeremiah Rabideau trying to hunt him down in the title. And we'll, we'll bring them 
to the start finish line. To the aid of uh, Charlie Verhoeven there inside row number three. Looking for the green flag. We're racing with the bone stocks here. 25 laps to do battle. Oh, we got a stalled car. The 84 stalled out of turn four. Has trapped the 97 along the pit wall. And the 97 gets going, but the 84 is going to be stopped right there. We'll see a caution here for sure. And caution on the speedway. The 84 could not get going out of turn four, Gary, and clogged up a bunch of cars, but we'll restack them and repack them to do it all over again. Yeah, it almost looked like when he drove away that the uh, wheels stayed turned to the left. Like, I wonder if uh, maybe it just won't fire or if, oh, here we go. Let's go to the replay. 84 is on the inside. It's Mike Etzel. He won his heat race tonight as well. There he is right there. See the gap? Now he'll pin the 97 down low. It's just like he couldn't get going. Oh, there's some... Someone's dragging the bumper there. The, the, and he uh, still can't get going. Just want to make a shout out to the uh, camera crew for Rogers here. They always do a good work and they're vo they volunteer their time. And I mean, the camera shots and job that they do are fantastic. You know, you, every time you come on here, you, uh, you uh, praise our, our staff. It doesn't give you uh, more viewings than we allow. So we, 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 don't, don't call us, Gary. We'll call you. You know what? Here, here I thought you were going to, you know, complain because I don't give you enough praise, but you do a good job too, It's Chris. not about every, no, every week. That's every not week. why I said that. <laughs> the, the, the guys and gals behind the cameras, you are right to do a fantastic job of uh, capturing the pictures here at Delaware Speedway each and every Friday night. And we do appreciate their work. And, of course, uh, uh, the boys in the truck were doing a fantastic do job as well. Chris and uh, Jake do a fantastic job Actually, every fun, week. Fun fact, one of your cameramen is uh, Gerald Flynn, who uh, he's an electrician, as am I, and uh, we have worked together on many jobs together. There's the Culver machine. He run a heat race. They ripped the uh, rear bumper off. Uh... Now he can't. Can he get going? Yes, he can he get goes. going. Just some consultation there with the crew. The captain, Chris Lawrence. And he'll continue down pit road. Now, even though we didn't um, get a single lap in, unfortunately, Justin, because he pulled into the pits, he'll still have, he'll now have to start I was just at the ask tail you end. That, even though they I haven't completed an official lap yep, yet. Yep, because he's he's come off the track, so okay. you have to go to the back. Okay. So Justin Culver will restart shotgun on the field. Older brother, Justin Culver. Yes, we got that clear. We got that clear. So we're getting set to uh, re double up and order up this uh, field here. Nothing, uh, no laps have been completed just yet. And Tyler Wheel will be the control car again in the 85. Colin Williams outside in row number one. Hank Clausen in the uh, 24 will be inside row two. Adam Jenner outside row number two. The three of uh, London's Mike Howard will start outside row number three. He'll start outside the uh, eight machine of uh, Kerwood's Charlie Verhoeven. Then the 52 of Randy Martin, I believe, will be in row number four. Where we'll see some cars start to make moves early will be about four, five rows back. My apologies, the number three car is being driven this evening by Todd Shaw in the three machine. And we'll watch uh, for about a few rows back, three or four rows back, the 40 of Craig is there. He won a heat race. The 92 of Wilms is there. Langford, so Givens, Nathan Rhea, Cox, Rabideau, Craig Cole is there as well. There'll be some hard charges coming from about five, six rows back when we start this uh, feature over again, Gary. Yeah, um, it, it's only 25 laps, so again, they got to go. Um, and I'm interested to see how uh, Rabideau and Cox get going here. Yeah, you can't win the championship in the, in the second week in August, uh, Gary, but you could lose it. You can definitely lose it. White flag on the speedway here. We'll see the lights turn off the uh, Delaware Speedway pace car at the line. They're all uh, double file, ready to go here. Tyler Wheel will be the control car. 
25 laps of scheduled distance here to wrap up another night of racing here at Delaware Speedway. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Chris Orr's Gary Adrianson, top of the tower. Getting set under the lights here at the half mile. I think it was an option on that year. Tyler Wheel, Colin Williams at the front of this field. And a good, solid field we have here at Bone Stocks. Pace car will duck down on the pit road. They'll come around. You'll see a yellow painted stripe on the inside wall out of turn four. That's the start of the restart zone. You'll see a pylon and two red stripes at the end of the restart zone right there. Green flag for racing with the bone stocks. Everybody gets underway in good fashion. The leaders. Down the back, Willems, edging wheel into turn number three. Three wide, back in the field. The front of the field all stacked up to come out of turn four. Let's hear them as they cross the start finish at Delaware. Out of turn number two and down the back, Willems out front by about four now on wheel. Jenneru up to third. Here comes Jordan Wilms, the first of the uh, faster cars, trying to make his move early. Wilms to the inside, a Shaw for fourth. And there's Jay Cox. Rabideau's gotten ahead of Jay Cox now. That's your front two in the points. The double zero and the five separated by two measly points over three quarters of the way through the regular season. And a nice little tag there by Cox under the back of Rabideau into turn number three. As Rabideau will duck to the inside, trying to get under the 19 for position. As they got a ton of traffic ahead of them, up front. Oh, we got a spin, the Shaw's around on the inside, and he straightens it up, he'll go to the apron, and will stay green in the three machine. He'll lose a ton of spots. They'll go four wide on the outside of the three car, including the five and the double zero. They're side by side through turns three and four. Wilms out, Wilms out front, Jordan Wilms in second. That's the 17 of Wilms, W-I-L-L-E-M-S, and then there's 92 of Wilms, W-I-L-M-S, in second spot. Wheels drop back to third, Jenneru to fourth. Craig now's come up to fifth, and the front five have a good 15 car length advantage on the sixth place car of Langford in the 0-3. And the 0-3 ahead of a gaggle of eight cars. Jordan Wilms has caught Colin Willems for the lead. The 17 and the 92 down the back. Jordan will duck to the inside. No contest as Jordan Wilms will get to the lead on a turn number four. New leader, the 92 at the strike with 19 to go. Rabideau and uh, Cox still haven't left each other. No, that's eighth and ninth respectively now. Rabideau and Jay there Cox. Are. There they are trying to get to the high side of the 26 of Nathan Rhea. That's a battle for the seventh position. That's about as far away they've been from each other the entire race so far. Absolutely, and they know who they're battling for the points. Don't kid yourself. Rabideau se seems to have some good cornering ability over the double zero, but the double zero maybe a little bit more straightaway speed, Gary. He definitely has uh, good straightaway speed. He gets a great run out of turn two, and you can see him suck right back up to the bumper of, of the five. Here's the leaders out of turn number four. Jordan Wilms out front in the 92, Colin Wilms in the 17. Then the crank machine of the 40 has now come up to third. So the 40 machine, um, Jason, Jason Craig. Craig out of Kamoka, Ontario, is trying to come to the front. That's the third place machine. There's Wilms, the 92. There's the 40 of Craig. That's your third place car. Meanwhile, Rabideau up to seventh. Cox still back in ninth. There's Colin Wilms. That's your second place driver in the 17, all by himself right now. There's Rabideau in the five to the inside of Jenneru. Here's Jay Cox in the double zero. They're in traffic, but it's all positional traffic. The 0-3 is Langford. The 65 or the 85 white is the, uh, pole, uh, the pole car of Tyler Wheel. And now Cox is tucked back into the rear deck of the five of Rabideau. 
They'll go with Langford to the inside of Tyler Wheel. They'll gain another spot. There is straightaway behind the leader. Rabbit in a five. Cox in the double zero. Wheel in the 85. The leader just crossed the strike, 14 to go. And Rabideau and Cox now to sixth and seventh, respectively. Cox up to, or sorry, Rabideau is up to fourth now, and Jay Cox is up to fifth. Oh, sorry, fourth and fifth, my apologies. I think Langford's in fourth, isn't he? Yes, he is, yep, yeah. so this is for position. Yeah, for position, fifth and sixth, Rabideau and Cox, respectively, there's the leader. In the turn one, let's go back to position five. Zero, three of Langford has it, the five of Rabideau wants it. Rabideau will go to the high side. Jay Cox trying to stay down low. They'll come out of turn number two. Good run by the double zero of Jay Cox. Right in behind the five of Rabideau. They go to the high side. That's one, two in the points, folks. Double zero by two points over the five of Rabideau. It was one before the start of the night. And the Cox finished the position ahead of Rabideau in the heat race for an additional point. Yeah, Rabideau can just, he can get to the throttle just a little bit quicker than what Jay Cox can, but Jay Cox, he really gets a run down the straightaway. And the leader, Jordan Wilms, come out to severe traffic now. In turns one and two, a ton of traffic ahead of the leader, Jordan Wilms, in the 92. Here's the 92 of Jordan Wilms. He'll go to the high side as well. Here he comes, there he comes through turns four. Now he'll come to the outside of the 88 of Starrett, the pink 88 machine. Lots of traffic for the 92 of Wilms. Wilms, my apologies. I keep mixing up the 92 and the 17. Speaking of the 17, Colin Willems, he's been passed by the 40 of Craig. So now Craig up the second spot. And you can see on screen here that Jay Cox got by the old by Rabideau. Rabideau got into some trouble and has fallen back a few spots. He's got a, a few spots behind, yeah. Cox has gotten by Rhea Gibbons, and now Craig Cole has passed Rabideau back in the field. There's the leader, the 92 of Jordan Wilms to the high side of Howard in the 58, or the 59, now trying to get to the outside of Jennifer Hatch in the 17. Eight to go that time by. And Craig starting to track the leader down, but lots of traffic. Rabideau back in the field now to the high side of Gibbons. Oh, we got one almost around in turn two. Yeah, slow car. That's uh, Ian LeVac in the 10. But we'll stay green. Lots of traffic for the points leaders. Not for Jay Cox, but Rabideau's marting a ton of traffic. Back to the front. The 92 of Wilms out front. And Craig, the second place driver, a half a straightaway behind the leader now. Six to go next time by. And we got a slow car at the start finish. The 611 right in the middle of traffic. And the traffic will go to the high side. And the 611 will try and get off the track here. And they will. Wilms, free track in front of him now as the leader. Craig in second spot has five cars to negotiate. Colin Wilms still in third. Now it's Jay Cox up to fourth. Nathan Rhea in fifth, and then Jeremiah Rabino in sixth. Five to go. Can Craig get through the traffic? He's got to have a straightaway to catch the leader, though, with less than five laps to go. Rabbit Omar back in traffic still, trying to get to the high side of Nathan Rhea. He'll get trapped by the eight. And we almost had a spin there in turn number three, but we'll stay green as Jordan Wilms tries to finish this off with three and a half laps to go. Huge battle with Rabideau, Rhea, Craig Cole, Langford, and Gibbons. Dicing, slicing, and dicing down the back stretch. A half a lap behind the leader. There's the leader into turn number one. That's Jordan Wilms with less than three laps to go. Rabideau has gotten by Gibbons and now Nathan Rhea. And now Rabideau sits one position back at Jay Cox, but half a straightaway behind the points leader. There's the five of Rabideau. There could be another one point difference here 
but that's better than five or six at this point. Less than two laps to go for the leader. And the leader in the turn two and down the back. Jordan Wilms in the 92. Craig all by himself in second now with lots of track, but a ton of track to catch the leader. Wilms gonna be catching traffic again before the end of this race. White flag this time by. And he'll take the white flag right now for the 92. Jordan Wilms. We haven't heard from Jordan Wilms after a feature race all season, Gary, if I'm not mistaken. Well, uh, nothing like a good time to do it. Right now, he's got a ton of room. He's got a ton of space. He does not need to negotiate any more traffic. Through turns three and four, the 92 of Jordan Wilms is going to take the bold stock feature at Delaware. Check and flag. Craig will come out of turn number four to take second spot. And it's going to be the 17 of Colin Wilms in third, holding off the double zero of Jay Cox in fourth. Jeremiah Rabideau finishes in fifth. So another point difference in the points championship, and Jay Cox will now take a three-point advantage into the next event for the Bone Stock Division. Yeah, actually, they, uh, Jay Cox finished third, Chris, and Rabido finished fourth. 17 didn't finish ahead of Jay Cox. Well, they came across the line. I, I was thinking about that, but it doesn't show on the screen. So you might be right, actually. It just didn't show up on scoring. I don't think they I don't think they passed Colin Wilms in the, in the 17. I think Colin was still there. Yeah, I, actually, I think you're right, because it looks like he's going to Tech. So. Oh, the 17 has actually scored 33rd. You are correct, uh, Gary, and thank you to the guys in the truck. So, yeah, Jay Cox up to third. Rabido will finish fourth. Nathan Rhea will finish fifth. Now, the only way, the only thing I don't understand about that is the blue 17 is lining up to go through Tech Garage behind the 40 of Craig. If he was 30-30, he wouldn't be lining up, would they, or they all have to go yeah, through? It, it's a good possibility that the, the his... Um, uh, because the top five, the top five or six have to go through tech or the top ten? The top five usually. Okay. Well, usually it's top five, but I mean, there's a lot of cars lining up and going to tech here. So. Let's go track side to Jordan Mosley. These cars throughout the week, they get faster, obviously. There you go. You made that one look easy, pulled out front uh, right out of the gate. You just had lap traffic to deal with. How was that? Oh, it was fantastic. Those guys actually were doing a really good job. Thanks for the flag stand guy. He is telling those guys to move over for me. They're doing a great job. Um, Props to everybody out there. They were, everybody is doing awesome. I know you got a lot of people you want to thank down here. First and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, St. Clair Mechanical, Interface Testing Services, uh, Jackson Electric, Jakeman's uh, Maple Syrup. Uh, my father-in-law is here watching in the stands tonight. Uh, my family, my friends. Chris, I uh, hope you're not yelling at the TV too loud tonight. Jordan Wilms, your winner in the Wampa Fuels Bone Stocks. We go All right, green that is checkers. your Bone Stock feature race winner. Jordan Wilms in the 92 will wrap things up from the half mile on the other side of the break. Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV. If you're the parent of a 12 to 14 year old girl, I do not have to tell you how difficult it is to grow up today. Research shows us that mental health challenges are on the rise. Join our expert mental health providers on September 30th at Matthews Hall with the Yes I Can Gathering for Girls. It's a safe space for girls to work through the tough stuff they face every day. Follow us at Yes I Can GFG or go to www.waybakerinc.ca for more information and to register. Yeah, it's uh, relatively uh, even start to this one here both teams kind of just bouncing it around between each other's side Swordbird is going to get another beautiful shot right into the back of that fan shot net there off a nice counter-attack opportunity once again there and uh, they struggle when it when it seems as though they play teams that have the same mentality and the same uh, game plan Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rep TV. Uh, Chris Soares and Gary Adrianson uh, taking a, uh, night, a week off for the late malls. They weren't racing, obviously, tonight. i got to send a shout-out to uh, Kyle, one of our volunteers who manned the uh, camera down at trackside. We were able to talk, actually, directly to uh, drivers, and Kyle was behind the camera with the Victory Lane uh, interviews and the driver interviews. Kyle did a fantastic job. Give me your thoughts, Gary, on the night tonight. I, actually, I think the, the way that we did it there with uh, us being able to talk to the drivers was 
was pretty pretty good actually yeah absolutely you know? uh and good racing and uh, obviously a, a great visit by the ontario uh, outlaw super late well, malls tonight those guys always put on a good show i mean especially when you got a visiting driver as uh, or a substitute driver jr fitzpatrick sweeps the night uh i'm not surprised though absolutely uh, steve book with the v8 stock feature race win jordan wilms in the bone stock division a uh, week from tonight this guy back in the cockpit of a late model as the late models will go 75 laps next friday night the super stocks double feature night here at delaware speedway don't forget delawarespeedway.com for all your ticket information and country concert with jake owens this thursday we're back at it next friday night 7 30 on the air for all the staff here for gary and myself gary thank you so so much for this. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, for have, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Delaware Speedway Racing on Rogers TV and Rev TV tonight. Avery remembers that. I always see her great results. Her hair still is so smooth and it looks so silky. It has. Okay. Why can't we just see the blowout? All right, let's insert it. How did you get into doing makeup? Yeah, I actually, uh, while I attended the University of Western, I was working as a receptionist at a hair salon and all the girls were doing photo shoots and weddings and I wanted to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, since I was a young child, I'd always collected makeup. I was really good at art. So then I decided to go to makeup school and here we are. Oh, great. And do you find that clients will come in and have this done if they've got a party coming up or um, a special event, not just for graduations and proms and things like that? Yep, absolutely. So I do lots of um, wedding, obviously weddings every weekend. I do lots of headshots, lots of branding shots. Um, I do holiday parties, attendees of weddings, um, pretty much anything that you make it, make, make it for, I do, yeah. And is there a specific brand that you use or do you like different products in different lines? Yeah, I do like different products depending on the product, obviously the skin type, um, the client's coloring. Um, I use everything between uh, MAC, NARS, Makeup Forever, um, Dior, YSL, pretty much everything. Yeah. That's great. Is there an area that you like working on the most? Do you like kind of defining eyes or lips or what's sort of your favorite? Yeah, my favorite would have to be eyes. I love making eyes pop, um, whether it's a good shadow color that makes the color pop or lashes that will just open the eyes up. Mm -hmm. um, also love doing skin. So just mm -hmm. like evening out skin, making it nice and glowy. The trends right now are super glowy, fresh, clear skin opposed to that like cakey kind of look. So mm -hmm. love making that glow from within shine through. Yeah, it must be difficult to keep up with all the trends, everything changing. Yes, all the time. yes, yes, always changing. Um, a lot of the inspiration right now is coming from Hailey Bieber, that almost like no makeup makeup look, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that little tiny cat eye. Um, but yeah, I would say skin right now, the the kind of more bushy, fluffy brows are super popular. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, my clients will get them laminated too. Oh. And do you find that now you know COVID is kind of ending and 
um, client people are getting out more they're going to more functions mm -hmm. do they tend to come in and sort of treat themselves a little bit more to things like this absolutely yeah COVID was obviously rough for everyone in the beauty industry but right now I feel like people are kind of taking a little more time for themselves and and you know getting them themselves beautified before even dinners out like just simple simple even house parties and yeah, stuff I feel like just that's treating true. themselves yeah definitely so Katie is there anything that um, that you prefer that you specialize in here yeah I absolutely love doing um, airbrush makeup so it's oh, actually wow. a super cool technique not a lot of makeup artists do it um, but it is applying foundation through a little gun and it just applies the foundation more evenly more flawlessly it's a 24-hour wear because it's silicone based so it's not going to run if you're crying or you know it's raining outside um, and then obviously you won't be able to take it off until you wash your face with a cleanser and um, it's high def too so it looks flawless in photos oh wow that would probably be really popular for brides yeah, absolutely yes yeah, yeah. So the before and afters were incredible. Thank you so much, Katie, for having me. Thank you, Erin, for being here. Your amazing services, the filming. Oh, thank you so much. I had such a good time. I know Elizabeth did too. She looks incredible. Um, so coming up, we are going to be at Five Star Barber, where Terry is actually going to get a fade cut. So stay with us and maybe you'll decide to treat yourself. My name's Ranger M, and I work at Catfish Creek Conservation Authority. I'm the community outreach technician, and that means I do a lot of this. Chatting about all things nature and conservation with kids, adults, teachers, everyone. I love to knowledge share, and that's just what I'm going to do with you. So come on, let's go learn with Ranger M. We all start on different bases, and only some of us make it safely home. Anyone can get stuck on first, without a clear path to home base. There are over 235,000 Canadians experiencing homelessness every year. Raising the Roof is on a mission to help all those in need find a safe place to call home. With every purchase of a Raising the Roof baseball cap, you are helping us get one step closer to ending homelessness in Canada. Visit RaisingTheRoof.org to get yours today because everyone deserves a home base. Monday. Holidating Purpose is a new show all about supporting organizations seeking to have so right, social impact no, in the work that they do. Structure. Whether nonprofit, for-profit, or social enterprise uh, grassroots organization, you'll learn key considerations to starting or growing your social purpose business in a long-term and sustainable way. Pollinating Purpose on Rogers TV. Mondays, Charity's quest for love continues. Everything that I've prayed for is right in front of me. I really feel like I'm falling in love with you. I could see my future husband. But will she regret? What am I doing? Her happily ever after? It could be the last night that I see Charity. Every single day I've woken up and I've regretted my choice. You were not supposed to say goodbye to somebody that you love. <laughs> the Bachelorette, all new Mondays 8, 7 central on City TV or stream on City TV Plus, the app or CityTV.com. Keith, how did you get started uh, with Five Star Barber? Um, so I moved to London area about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I was previously cutting in Pickering, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And so one big thing for me when I was trying to find a barber shop here is I was trying to find 
a barber shop that was very diverse in the sense where we cut all types of hair and somewhere with a good reputation, of course. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I actually, I went on Google, I tried to find a couple of barber shops with high uh, Google ratings, and I kind of just made sure they had a good social media presence. And of course, I, I came in, I kind of met with different barber shops. And at the end of the day, I, I felt like barber shop, uh, Five Star Barber Shop was somewhere that I got along with the most. Yeah. So yeah, simple as that, honestly. Yeah, it's beautiful here. I love the atmosphere. It's really kind of like a cool vibe. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really neat. I know clients really like it. Yeah. So we, uh, we're actually in a new spot now. Uh, we moved here uh, since last week of June, we've been here. And it's definitely, definitely an upgrade from the old spot. Yeah. So we're, we're loving it here. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So Terry has been growing his beard out specifically for you to come in and shape it up. Is that something that you often do? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I think, uh, so really as a barber, I deal a lot with kind of anything from the shoulders up. Yeah. So we're doing the haircuts, we're doing the beards. Sometimes we'll even do some eyebrow work. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> So would you prefer, I know Terry likes to come in every two weeks because he likes his hair nice and clean cut, but would you prefer if people uh, waited longer and you had like a full head of, you know, a month's grown out to uh, to kind of work your art? Or uh, Me personally, I'd say anywhere from the two to three week mark is kind of the best uh, to keep the haircut looking fresh mm -hmm. and probably a little bit easier for me in the sense where I'm not... When, I, when people come in after, say, a couple months or so, I really have to do a reshaping of the haircut, figure everything out. But if you come in every two to three weeks, the blueprint's already there, and I just need to follow it, yeah. which is so nice. So it's easier for you to maintain their Big haircut. Big time it is. Yeah. Big time. Good. We are here with owner and founder of Five Star Barber, Daniel Lopez. Welcome, Daniel. Hey, thank you for having me. So this place is so cool. It has such a, a cool vibe to it. How did you come upon this place? We found this place um, early in the beginning of the summer. Our, my wife has a spot here. She had a waiting room for her studio mm -hmm. and it was enough space for us to be able to put in our barbershop. So now that it was pretty much how we were able to- Prices to hold upon it. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, great. And did you have to do much to it or was it just re kind of ready to go? So it was kind of ready to go. We did a lot of just uh, detailing and uh, decorating, things like that, but it was pretty much like the vibe was already there. Yeah. We just had to kind of like uh, establish our own. Yeah. Um, Your own character. Yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. yeah, it's really cool because it's kind of like, it's not uh, like, it, it feels like, it, Kind of like a guy vibe, right, so right. like super comfortable. Guys yeah. can just come in, get their hair cut, but then it's got like a chic vibe to it too. Exactly. So we yeah. ended to kind of make it like a place that it wouldn't feel uncomfortable for a man or a woman to come yeah. in. Um, of course, we share the studio space, mm -hmm. and so we wanted her clients to kind of like feel comfortable when they walk through and go into her space, and yeah. or vice versa, where you know guys are in here, they don't feel like oh, it's too female, it's too feminine, feminine yeah. or anything like that. So. Yeah, we kind of decorated in that in that sense where it was just like something that super old East Village, right? Like, oh like yeah, something chic, something nice, uh, modern, but also uh, vintage in, in the same sense. Yeah, definitely. I think you've definitely nailed that. So, uh, what kind of cuts do you specialize in? So we specialize in uh, all kinds of men's grooming. Um, I mean, we we do women's haircuts as well, uh, all short styled, mm -hmm. but mainly I'll, everything from fades to scissor work to uh, make medium length haircuts, designs, uh, shaves, hot towels, those kinds of things. So we offer quite a, ver a variety of things. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, when you're when you're seeing a client for the first time, is it something that you kind of collaborate on? Do they come in and they say, I have no idea what to do and you can just kind of take control? Or do you prefer they have an idea in mind? Yeah, so I mean, we, it's nice to know what they would want. Of course, we get a lot of, uh, oh, just kind of do, you, do your thing, right? Yeah. So you're kind of guessing us what, what it is that they want. It is nice for uh, you to have an idea of their style, but also we take in consideration the head shape, texture of hair, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, right? Yeah. Or even the season. Like yeah. a lot of times we won't cut like super short, but I wouldn't suggest if it's like cold out or something like that. Right? Yeah. So it's kind of collaboration of both, but we do, uh, if they do give us some, some, something to work with, we give them a lot of input because we want them to feel comfortable and know what's kind of like in style, what's what's the best for their hair and, and things like that. 
How long have you been doing this? Oh, uh, so I've been cutting hair for just over 20 years. Oh, wow. Oh, that, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's been, it's been quite a while. So. You seem extremely knowledgeable. Yes. That, and then how did you get into fades? Because 20 years ago, people weren't doing fades. Yeah, for sure. So like 20 years ago, I was, uh, I was into fades mm -hmm. because it was something that like you would see in uh, the U.S. or like American barbershops. It was uh, super big. And so for myself, I just kind of wanted to have um, a fresh fade all the time. Yeah. Uh, of course, like being young, I'm not working. My parents are the ones that have to like supply yeah. money for the haircuts. So um, yeah, my mom, she pretty much bought me a pair of clippers and told me like, you want an often haircut, then you can <laughs> try try to figure it out yourself. So that's pretty that's much good, how I started. Good mom. Yeah, exactly. Or she yeah. pushed you with the career. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how can people contact you here at Five Star Barber? Yeah, of course. Like, so we suggest on our website, we have a perfect platform for it. In our, it's fivestarbarber.ca. And our menu, there's a book now tab. They can click that and it'll give you an option of each barber. And you can see like what their next availability is um, and what kind of haircut you can get. However, the length of haircut or anything like that's perfect. Yeah, it's a good platform to use and it's really like easy. You get confirmation e email for to remind you of your uh, of your haircut. And so, yeah, yeah that's pretty That's great. So Daniel, I love the fact that uh, you work here um, with your wife as well. Yeah. Can you just tell me a little bit about what she does? Yeah, so she specializes in skincare and uh, mm -hmm. pro-aging, mm -hmm. uh, holistic facials. Mm -hmm. She does do microblading, microneedling, um, but really focuses on the skin and skincare pro-aging, um, whereas a lot of different companies uh, kind of in the same um, in the same area would do something like anti-aging mm -hmm. but uh, I find it very important we can't anti-age we can't stop our age mm -hmm. so pro-aging is, is pretty much her uh, oh that's great I love that yeah and what's her business name her business is called kept mm -hmm. um, yeah she, she's been in business since uh, 2018 yeah and so yeah it's, it's she's been doing really good her website is actually kept.com okay and she does education as well she teaches a lot of it and a different variety of her of her of all, Wait, she, all, all the things she does whatever she offers yeah so it just this this aesthetics industry is such a small world i've yeah. heard of your wife i've only heard great things about her yeah. so i think definitely the viewers should come and check her out as yeah. well as you yeah. uh, thank you so much for being here no, today i appreciate it yeah. i appreciate you guys coming by and checking us out and yeah and i love i love your space yeah. let the hive it's really cool no for sure we always wanted to keep that like make it welcome for anybody right yeah. from children to older ones to anybody right so it's been uh, it's been it's been really nice to have it. It's been really nice to offer it, and so yeah, it's a cool studio space, and you know anybody can come by for yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, it's been such a great day. First at Taz Hair Company, um, Elizabeth had her hair and makeup done. And she looked beautiful, looked like she was ready for her prom. Yeah, I think that's exactly what she's going to do for her prom, which is coming up. Um, and then you with your haircut. Yeah, so today we were with uh, Keith, Lopez, Shane and Christian at Five Star Barber. I got my hair cut, I got my beard cut for the first time. Had a great time. I Looks really love amazing. It. Thank you. As usual. Well yep. done, Thank Keith. You. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Lopez, if uh, the... If the viewers would like to make an appointment, what's the best way to get in contact with Five Star Barber? Yeah, so the best way to book is on our website. We have a platform there, fivestarbarber.ca. In the menu, there's a book now tab. You can choose any barber. If you want to look this good. See any of us, see any of us. But yeah, any of the barbers, they're really equipped and uh, knowledgeable in hair, so anybody can, can do a great job for sure. Awesome, Amazing. thank great. you so much. So if you have a show idea or a service that you would like for us to feature, contact Rogers TV and hopefully we'll do that. And in the meantime, don't, don't forget, forget to, to treat, treat yourself. yourself.
call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. This is a brain in urgent need of mental health care. But because three out of every four indigenous people experience racism in healthcare, she may not get the help she needs. Become an ally. Rise above racism in healthcare. As each day passes, we have one guarantee. The sun will rise in the morning and set in the evening. No matter where you are on this earth, there is a sunrise and a sunset. No matter the weather, the pollution, the clouds, there is a sunrise and a sunset. No matter what you do, like the sun, you will also have a time to rise and a time to set. Do you have something to share? Let everyone know about your next meeting, your need for volunteers, or your fundraising event on the Rogers TV Community Billboard. Send us your words and we'll bring them to life on Rogers TV and RogersTV.com. When it's time to spread the word, go to RogersTV.com to add your announcement to the Community Billboard. Watching Rogers TV. Hello and welcome to Invisible, Breaking Through the Stigma of Addiction. This is a local television show that we have that talks about addiction and how it impacts the city of London and the people in it. I'm Dean Anderson, your host, and today we have somebody who uh, has really experienced the front line uh, in the city of London. Her name is Karen Burton and she's from the London Inner Community Health Centre. Welcome, Karen. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Karen, what is it exactly that you do? Can you describe your role? Absolutely. I am a harm reduction worker, an outreach worker, and I work with people who use substances in the city of London. So in that, in that process, um, the, a big part of it is would be constituted the, the harm reduction, we call yes, it, right? Yes, yes. Can you explain to me what harm reduction is from your own words? Sure. Um, so harm reduction is um, a set of practices, policies, principles that have been put in place to help people use their substances safer. So um, it might be the, somebody who's on the weekend and they're using cocaine with their friends mm -hmm. um, and their, their, their dollar bill that they use. Mm -hmm. We might say to them, could you use a straw instead of using the dollar bill? The bill has um, all kinds of dirt and germs on it. Right. We don't want you putting that up your nose. Your mucous membranes um, are really delicate. So if you have a straw, we also want you to use your own straw. We, um, we don't want you to share your straw with somebody else. So we're also not asking you to stop the practices, um, the substance use that you're doing. Um, so harm reduction is very much, we want to make what you're doing as safe as possible for you without saying to you, you have to stop doing this. But also bear it in mind, should you want to stop doing it, we're there to help you with that as well. So harm reduction can go from all the way from people using casually um, to methadone to abstinence. Um, there's a whole group of um, things in harm reduction. And I think a lot of people don't realize that it can reach from casual use to um, complete abstinence. I think people a lot of people think that harm reduction is, I'm showing you how to use safer, but I'm not actually offering anything else in mm -hmm. that. So um, yeah, that in kind of a nutshell is what harm reduction is, yes. And your description just nudged about a thousand questions in me. 
Uh, what uh, what I, I've heard in the past and what people tend to recognize is it's immediately going to um, needle exchange and, and those sort of things are harm reduction, but you gave it this big broad spectrum of what harm reduction is. And then being saying that we're, we're, we're not telling people that they have to change if they don't want to change, they can continue to use their use. What's the mentality behind that? I think it's realizing that if you want to connect with people, um, then you need to um, meet them where they are. And um, what is wrong with saying to somebody, hey, there's a different way to do this that might be a little bit safer for you, um, but I don't need anything else from you. I'm going to introduce this to you. Should you choose to use it, great. Um, if I can get somebody one time one time out of ten to do something a safer way, I've, I've still won, right? I've got them one time out of ten. So the plan is that you want people to practice safer all of the time, but realising that when I change a habit of my own, am I going to do it all the time? Sometimes. Um, um, it takes time to get there as well. Mm -hmm. So some people, straight off the bat, that habit will be um, that practice that they use to use safer will be all of the time that they do it now. And some, some people, it will be here and there that they use that practice. But you've still got them more than you had them before. So that's, I mean, so it's about safety, it's about yep. well-being, it's about learning and growing and developing and, yep. and being as, and, I, and I'm assuming that, I mean, when we talk about other types of harm reduction, like safe supply and um, supervised consumption, yes. we're all actually saving some lives too. Oh, definitely. Um, and I, I, the other thing is people have this, um, not all people, some people have this fear of a safe consumption site, but a bar is a safe consumption site where you actually get your substance you go to the bar and you buy your substance. So, and again, people will say, well, it's legal, but it wasn't always legal. Um, so it's a safe consumption site is somewhere that some, somebody can go and take their substances with them. Are those substances illegal? Sometimes, sometimes they are. Sometimes they're their prescribed medication that they're using at that site. Um, when they walk into that site, they ask, what are you using? What substance are you using today? Um, and um, so people know um, what substance they're using when they walk in. They are given new equipment when they walk in the door to be able to use safely. Uh, there is somebody there to offer advice should they want some advice on how to use safer. And there's somebody there if they overdose. And it's not just overdosing. Sometimes people can over amp on crystal meth um, and stimulants. Mm -hmm. So you're there as well if somebody over amps and you're there to help them so that they're not just leaving and you know their heart's going a million miles an hour, their blood pressure's through the roof, they're at risk of stroke. You've got nurses in that room who, and paramedics who can help people out if somebody overdoses. They are there. To, um, to bring them back, to be able to administer naloxone if needed, to administer oxygen, to keep an eye on somebody for hours afterwards. I think the other piece that um, sometimes gets lost is that you've got that room where people use their substances and they inject their substances um, in that room, and then there's a little room just beside it. And that's where people sit afterwards to rest. That is your chance as well as in the room when they're using, but more importantly over in this other little room is your chance to build a relationship with somebody. Using substances, when somebody is injecting their substances, in my opinion, is one, sorry, in my opinion, is one of the most intimate things I have ever been part of. Um, so being in that room, when somebody is using their substances, that's a really intimate thing for that person. And for them to be okay with sharing that with you, I think we don't realize how, how the trust that is involved in that. Once you have that trust, then you, you build your relationship with a person. And it's a different kind of relationship than somebody just popping in um, for a quick to pick up something you get to know more about them, about their family, about what brought them um, to your services in the first place. It also gives you an opportunity to be able to um, plan with them 
what things down the road might look like for them. If they are looking to make changes, what do those changes look like to them? Because if you and I are working together, I can have all the ideas in the world, but if you don't want to go along with them, or if they don't fit, um, fit your agenda, um, me coming along with my agenda, it, it's not worth it. The other thing I think um, is rehab. When people go to a 30-day rehab, we have this, this thing where 21 days to change a habit. I think that's things like biting your nails. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do, that's what I think. I think, yeah. I think it's stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is bigger stuff and maybe it has worked for other people. But for me, 21 days to change a habit um, doesn't work. And also a habit is not necessarily um, a health care issue. So somebody who uses substances um, goes away for 30 days to a rehab and that's great, their body's had a break and we hope that when they come out that they continue to stay sober. And if they don't, we tend to consider that they're a failure. What, what I want people to realise is that, that somebody has a break from using substances, be it a day, be it they've put off using for an hour, um, be it the 30 days or however long, I think it's important to realise that their body had a break for that time. It had time to start recovering. Um, and they learned so much when they were in there. So if they come out and they start using again, uh, their tolerance is, is low because you haven't used for a while. I mean, you can go away for a weekend, not use and come come back and your tolerance is really low. So 30 days, your tolerance is completely gone. Mm -hmm. So you want somebody to go into a safe site to you so that if they do overdose, because they think that they can use what they used before, if they do overdose, somebody is there to help them. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, if somebody goes to rehab, yeah, they're gonna come out and they're not gonna use again. The reality is it's peaks and valleys. And for some people, it takes many, many stints in rehab um, before things change for them. So I think building relationships with people where when they are using, they are, they're looked on as the person that they are. We don't define people. I have depression. I'm not depression. Mm -hmm. um, I don't walk around saying, I'm depression. Hi, I'm Karen, I'm depression. Mm -hmm. I say, I'm Karen. And if, if it comes up, like it has with you, I, I suffer with depression. Mm -hmm. It isn't who I am. We, um, as a society, um, someone's an addict. Um, no, they have an addiction that may or may not be with them for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. So it's important to build that connection with somebody and be able to help them. Um, and also the other thing people don't realise is we really learn from our clients. We learn oh, so bet. much, so much from our mm -hmm. clients. Being able to, um, you know, talk to somebody about the way they use their substances and why they use them that way. Um, a lot of times people will say, well, that's what I was taught. Somebody taught me to do that, um, who I was using with that that time. And so it would be like, okay, so why don't we try this way and these are the reasons why. It would be for safety. But I also don't ever want anyone to feel um, that they're stupid, you know. I don't, want, I don't ever want to say to somebody, oh, no, what you're doing is wrong. You know, your practice is wrong. I don't ever want to say that to somebody. I will say, why don't we try this way? We have learned that. If you do it this way, if you face a needle upwards when you're putting it in your arm, it's kinder to your vein. If you use alcohol before you inject, you're getting rid of germs. If you use alcohol after you inject, it might bleed a little bit, so let's use a little dry right. pad. So things like that that, um, that people may have learned from other people, it's about um, teaching, but doing it in a kind way. I think kindness is massive. Um, I think we all judge. We all judge a situation when we walk in a room. Um, so, but I think being with somebody and making sure that your judgments are based on kindness and are based on not getting, oh, my, my way is right, where everything I say is right. Even if I have all the evidence behind me, if you don't want to do it, 
do I want to lose, lose that relationship with you? No, no I don't. No, I don't. No. Yeah. So I, I, uh, so much information there, mm -hmm. which is bringing us into the end of our uh, end of our interview. But I, I just want, I hope everybody listens to that and listens to that wonderful Thank information you. because it was uh, very articulate and well put. I couldn't put it any better. Uh, there is something to be noted within the stigma and shame of things that we isolate and separate people in that process and we believe that separating them and isolating them is what's going to help them this tough love if I don't if you don't get what you want you're going to have enough pain to want to change but the reality of it is is the pain requires more medication and then they have to use more so yes. what you're saying is give them some love show them yes. some openness show them that there's a way show them there's healthy show them that someone cares and then when they're ready to change they can change on their own steam absolutely absolutely wonderful thank you Karen I appreciate you being on the show and sharing all that great information and I look forward to talking to you more in the future. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. My Thank pleasure. You. We'll be right back after this break. I am honored to make your dream come true. Tuesdays on City TV. It blew me away. It doesn't even look real. It looks like a special effect. We've done some moves we have never, ever seen. This is an audition I'll never forget. It was amazing. America's Got Talent. All new Tuesdays, 8, 7 central on City TV or stream anytime. Welcome back to the show. We couldn't talk about harm reduction without having our next guest on. Um, Dr. Ken Lee is an addiction medicine doctor, and we had him on the show last season, and we got to talk about some of the harm reduction methods he was using, and there's been since more advancements, more information, you know, helping more people, and uh, so we're just going to jump right into talking to Dr. Lee. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Dean. Um, thanks for the invitation. Um, we're very excited at the Ram Clinic here in London. Um, during this COVID pandemic, we've had the opportunity to uh, trial a, a new treatment, a new medication um, for opiate addiction. And as you know, fentanyl has been a great problem in our city. Um, but we think we are getting some answers now. Um, so what we have been pioneering here in London um, is the use of monthly sublocate injections. And the beauty of that is that it provides month-long um, levels, uh, steady levels of buprenorphine, which is the main component in Suboxone. And in opiate addiction, you know, all we had before was methadone and Suboxone. Um, we now have other options, including safe supply, um, pandemic safe supply, um, some people call it in Vancouver. Um, we call it uh, safe supply here in London, Ontario. But now with this uh, other option, we've treated uh, 250 patients uh, since October uh, 2019 with uh, Sublocade and we have had uh, no overdose deaths uh, in this patient population. Um, a lot of tweaking, a lot of uh, adjustments in our protocols, um, but we're very excited by this. Um, I just presented this data to, to a number of international conferences um, in uh, Minneapolis, in London, UK, um, just this morning, and, and Friday I'm headed to Italy to uh, share our experience. So I'm just going to be jealous about you going to Italy for a minute and, <laughs> and being able to travel and spread this uh, wonderful information. So the Supplicate is an injection that works in the same way that methadone or so it's an opioid um, uh, replacement therapy, right? Right. It's, um, it's an opioid replacement therapy, but the beauty with uh, Supplicate and Suboxone is that it treats the, uh, the withdrawals and the cravings that people have uh, after using fentanyl. Um, but at the same time, it blocks out the euphoric effect of fentanyl. And so what patients have told me is, hey, doc, if I can't get high, that means I can't die. And, uh, you know, we suspected this uh, when we learned about the availability of this treatment. But now we've collected data for 250 patients now and um, have papers uh, published, poster presentations at uh, various international conferences, and, and a paper is in the works right now. Um, so. We think we have an advance that we can uh, share with uh, the world. Um, we've been doing this for two years now in London, Ontario, and it's time to spread the word. Um, the new thing that we've, uh, we've learned is that we can start this treatment very quickly. So at the RAM Clinic, just this week, we had 10 new patients uh, roll in 
um, asking for, quote, the needle. And these are people who show up in clinic in various states of withdrawal. And if they're in withdrawal, we're able to uh, macrodose uh, a start on Suboxone and then give them the sublocated injection um, within two hours. Wow. And so from the time you come in the door um, to the time you walk out with your withdrawals controlled and cravings with, w controlled is two hours. Wow. Um, and after that, if you do choose and relapse uh, to fentanyl use, the effect of the fentanyl is blocked and uh, it provides, this is how it provides overdose protection. Wow, so the old way of doing it was someone would have to go into withdrawal and then they would have to go and, and, and microdose onto some other uh, opioid antagonist and then they would slowly increase that dosage and get to a point where now you're saying that they can come right from withdrawal right into a sublocate, right into a... Yeah, that's uh, right, Dean. Um, it's, it's an amazing advance. Um, it was pioneered in California through the California Bridge uh, um, group of clinics in uh, Los Angeles, San Diego, et cetera. It's a large group of clinics. Um, they pioneered this in the emergency department. Um, we've worked together with uh, doctors in Timmins who have pioneered this as well. And we brought this protocol to London. So yes, we've been doing this for about uh, three months now. He's so humble when he says we, but I know that uh, you're incremental in this whole process and bringing this to the city. Uh, and it's a, and you're, you know, there's a big name here. And for those that don't don't know, RAM stands for Rapid Access Addiction Medicine, and it's a clinic down here on on Queen Street. Am I correct? Yeah, it's down at uh, 200 Queens Ave. Okay. Uh, Queen and Clarence. Awesome. And I wanted to make sure we got that plug in there so that people know where to go, right? Yeah, You're going to say something you. else? Sorry, I, I jumped in. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, we, we called ourselves uh, the RAM Clinic Rapid Access Addiction uh, Medicine Clinic, right? So I guess we're now ultra rapid. <laughs> <laughs> new, new and improved. <laughs> yeah, in this, in this culture, we always need that shiny penny, right? So um, I, I can't overlook can't overlook the way you started the conversation to say uh, zero overdose deaths. I mean, that's massive. We recognize that we've seen more overdose deaths than, than COVID deaths um, in, in relation to, you know, how big this thing has become, especially with the, with the crisis. Yeah, that's right. Right? Uh, what are the biggest takeaways from this, and how are you sharing this information with uh, the Germany and Italy and all these other people? Yeah, the greatest think? takeaway is that um, now, with regards to opiates or replacement therapy, methadone, suboxone, safe supply, is that you have an exit strategy now. Um, you don't have to be taking a medication every single day. You don't have to be going to the pharmacy every day. Um, you don't have to have all these frequent doctor visits, right? Yeah. You come to the RAM clinic, um, get an injection once a month, mm -hmm. then you're off and on your way. Right. It's an amazing advance for people. Right, I don't think most people recognize or realize that every tiny little barrier, every little gap in service, or every time I've got to go and do something, that's a window for my, my drug use or my addiction to slip into that gap, right? Right. And you're removing the gap. Right, it's a major impediment to, uh, to uh, treatment retention. All the requirements for doctor visits, pharmacy visits, uh, urine drug testing samples and all that, we, we've taken that all away. Right. Um, most people can usually make time to go see the doctor once a month. Right. And, and the, the thing that really stands out in my mind is there's a behavioral change with having a one-time shot, right? I mean, by getting the shot and then not having, you said it earlier, you know, not having to take that, you know, the medicine every day or having to go there, right? I think, I think people don't recognize that if I was trying to stop eating cookies, but I walked to the pantry every 20 minutes to look in the pantry, I would be reminding myself that I want to eat cookies. Whereas, you know, having this injection, I'm not going to the pantry or going to get that daily dosage or doing that thing that doesn't remind me that I have to, um, I have to medicate from my addiction. Yeah, that's very well described, Dean. Um, and pharmacology, pharmacologically, it works well as well, because there's no peaks and valleys in the, in the, in the, uh, plasma levels of the uh, medication, right? Yeah. So when you're dosing methadone, suboxone daily, it goes up and then goes down and goes up and then goes down. And, and people describe in the morning, they feel kind of lousy and crummy and, you know, beyond the usual, I need my coffee, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, people on Sublocade don't describe that. They described uh, a very smooth month. Yeah. Yeah. So those ups and downs, and um, and, and we, we on the show we talk a lot about the emotional impacts as well. So those ups and downs can cause emotional dis, uh, dysregulation, and that emotional dysregulation means uh, I got to take care of this. I got to I got to use. I got to do something to take care of it. So that even keel helps with the emotional regulation as well. Exactly. The constant daily reminder um, that 
um, I'm addicted to fentanyl, is gone. You don't have to think about it. Right. Um, it people describe as uh, describe this as feeling uh, normal, and you know the the very interesting thing is that people will tell me, "What am I going to do with my day now? I have all this time." Yeah, because I mean, even in the DSM five, when we look at the description of of uh, substance use disorder, one of those categories is the drug seeking behavior. It says I spend more time looking and seeking for the, my drug of choice, and and so forth. You know, creating that thing. So that's just another barrier to you know that designation of substance use disorder. Yeah, it gives you time to work on relationships, uh, work on you know work uh, jobs, um, just getting your life back into a, a normal routine. Um, it takes out hours of time to, you know, remember to take your medication, go to the pharmacy, get your medication, and and you know what? Honestly, most people will miss a dose here and there, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, we all do, right? We, we all miss that that daily thing. There's anything that we would have our. Uh, I, I missed my vitamins yesterday, right? Uh, <laughs> I didn't recognize till dinner time. I'm like, oh, I forgot my vitamins, right? We just life goes on. So those, like I said, those gaps are are potentially lethal if all of a sudden you go in and relapse, especially when we're talking about something as dangerous as fentanyl, right? Yeah, that's right. If you miss uh, two days of uh, Suboxone, um, the fentanyl will break through. Um, fentanyl breaks through methadone and uh, it breaks through self safe supply as well. So um, we have the blockade and the withdrawal and craving coverage. So people, just, people are very happy with it. I, I bet. So what is the, is there um, direct things, that, like what's the next step? What are you doing? Are we going to try and get this into hospitals or get this into family doctors? Are we going to start selling this on the street corner? What are we doing, Dr. Lee, to make this? <laughs> <laughs> well, small steps, Dean. Small, small, Very small, small steps. Yeah. Small steps. We're, we're thinking big. We've got the new, the new ultra-fast RAM clinic. What's mm -hmm. next? What's next? Yeah. We, we keep spreading the word. Um, and I think the word is being spread in London amongst uh, people who suffer from, from addiction. Um, that's our, our, our greatest, uh, greatest advertising is from people who are users, um, passing it on to their friends. And, um, you know, I do survey and I do ask people, you know, how'd you find out about us? And the great majority of the time, I think 80% of the time, it's from uh, a friend. Yeah. Word of mouth, people recognize that they're making lifestyle changes, and that's the best way to do it, right? I mean, that's the way the 12 step program works. It's all word of mouth, right? It's all people helping people and sharing that information with one another. Yeah, really, that's, that's really what we try to do is yeah. just the people helping people, spreading the word, um, and slowly it will make a dent. All right, we've got to bring it to a close here right now, but really quick. What's the what's the cost of this? What how do people get it? I mean, how do people afford it? Is there is it is it like in the states where it costs you a million dollars for a for a, a, an injection or a pill or what's what does it look like? That's a that's a great question. Um, it is covered on all private drug plans, but most most importantly, it's covered by the Ontario Drug Benefits Plan. So anybody who's on Ontario Works uh, ODSP uh, is covered. Um, anybody who's under 25, it's covered by the under 25 OHIP plus. Anybody over 65 is covered by ODB. Um, the only gap is really the working poor, the working person, the working guy who doesn't have benefits coverage. Yeah. Okay. Um, and for that, uh, we help people apply for Trillium. You try to figure it out. You help them all through the steps and yeah, try to figure it out. Happen. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for all the work that you do uh, and sharing that knowledge. And we're certain that there's going to be people watching this show that are going to get those seeds planted and come knocking on the door of the Ram Clinic looking for uh, what they might need or family members or whatever that can share that information, that word of mouth, so you say. So thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Again, you were wonderful last mm -hmm. time you were here too. Thanks again, Dr. Lee. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. I did it. I need it. A hero gave it. And I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift to life. You'll be glad you did. We are so grateful here at Invisible to have so much knowledge and passion and purpose here on today's episode of Invisible. Uh, the things that are shared, um, 
really need to be a message that is heard by everyone. And if you think about it, when you go to your own refrigerator and you grab that light salad dressing because you know that the fat content or whatever's in it's gonna be bad for your cholesterol or maybe hurt your heart, that's harm reduction. Going to a bar or the LCBO and buying alcohol that you know is not gonna hurt you or have internal damages or do anything wrong to you has been tested and, um, and used uh, in a safe way. That's safe consumption. These are the fundamental principles behind harm reduction. That process also leaves the door open, a big door open. If we judge everyone based on the legality or the morality or mark them as deviants because they're using uh, substances, then we're closing those doors to show people that we don't care and that they don't deserve help. And when we look at it not so recently, we can see where cannabis was illegal and then now we have everybody in society lining up at the multiple shops everywhere purchasing it. So harm reduction is, is a real thing. It helps save lives and it's really important. So I encourage you all to learn more about it. And here at Invisible, we're trying to change a culture and in changing a culture and changing time, we need to remember the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago or right now. Thanks for watching. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. You're watching Rogers TV, London. Welcome again to this week's episode of LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. I am your host, Brona Morgan. I am involved in a lot of things in the community. So I wear a lot of hats, I wear a lot of shoes, I wear a lot of suits, I wear, uh, I don't know, a lot of sneakers. <laughs> One of the things I've been involved with recently is painting a mural. And I'm painting a mural at a, um, a beautiful new office for an organization that you're gonna wanna know about. The organization is called Beacon House. It hasn't opened yet here in London, but we're pretty close. You may have heard about the Beacon House in the news recently. I know there's been a couple of press releases put out. It's been in the media because since I started working on this mural in the office, a lot of people have been coming up to me and saying, I heard about the Beacon House. So if you haven't heard about the Beacon House, you're in for a very informative half hour tonight. So welcoming to the show, two guests um, talking about the Beacon House as well as why it's important. Catherine Dan from London Police Service as well as Tuin Jahal. Uh, Jajal. Jajal from the uh, London Family Court Clinic. So welcome to the show and thank you for being here. Thank you for having yes, us. Yes, thank yeah. you very much for having us. This is wonderful. Yeah. So. Um, the Beacon, I, I didn't say that you're from the Beacon House, but you're both involved with the Beacon House. So tell me about what it is, what your role is, and why is it so important? So I'll, I guess I'll start with my role. Um, so I am in charge of the London Police Service Sexual Assault and Child Abuse Section. So my section handles all cases of physical and sexual abuse of children. Um, so this project kind of started a couple of years ago, discussions about it, but we really moved forward um, on it over the last year or so, I yeah, would say. Yeah, the last year, that's, that's true. We, mm -hmm. it, um, unfortunately, with COVID, and everything that took place with COVID, we, you know, it lost a little bo momentum and steam, but our collaborators are back 
and we're so excited to be partnering with Catherine and her team over at LPS, as well as St. Joe's and um, CAS. So it's a really fantastic opportunity for us to leverage what Catherine and her team do at LPS in the child abuse section to really build Beacon House to be truly a, a beacon for wellness and community for children and victims of abuse. So absolutely exciting. All right, so um, the Beacon House is intended as kind of a, a safe space and kind of a full service, like a place that anybody, uh, young people who have been involved with, you know, any kind of crime, any kind of abuse in their lives have experienced this, will be served by everybody that they could potentially be served by in this one place and they won't have to continually be repeating their story and maybe being re-traumatized by having to tell their story to multiple different professionals. So talk to me about like what the Beacon House experience is intended to look like for young people. Well, uh, it's a great question. Thank mm -hmm. you for asking it. So it really begins with Catherine's team. Mm -hmm. So that referral into Beacon House is where it all begins. So it, it is very true that bringing everyone under one roof is really the, the fulcrum of everything. To stop those children and stop those victims from telling that story multiple times, which creates that traumatizing experience again and again. Part of it is also decreasing wait time in the system. You know, taking that opportunity to say, you don't have to wait two months, three months, or even longer to have that treatment or have that process begin for you. So it's really an opportunity to not only streamline the process, but to see those victims and allow them to focus on healing and have us be those system navigators for them. So the process is really about the initial intake with Catherine's mm -hmm. team and I can, she speaks far more intelligently than I would about what police services does in that process. But when it comes into the Beacon House, the process is really to have an advocate joined with the child and family right in the beginning. So there's no waiting. So you have someone who is well-trained and well-versed in not only system and community resources, but individuals who are well-trained in identifying that trauma lens. So viewing it through a lens which helps that child get through that process initially and then connecting them to those community services. So it's not just about us collaborating, which has been wonderful it over has, the past yeah. <laughs> you know, nine to 11 months, but it's really about connecting with the community and driving that care and focusing on that human at the end of it. And I think that's something that people forget is that at the end of everything, there's a victim. So we need to focus on getting them through the system, letting them focus on the healing process. Yeah, and I think one of our big um, goals is just to create a safe and welcoming and child-friendly space that the children and their families can come to when they have to tell the story about a horrible thing that happened to them. Because um, as we know, coming into a police station can be scary and intimidating for an adult. So imagine a child having to go to a police station and tell the story about what happened to them. So we really focused on creating a warm and welcoming environment. And as Tuan said, the kind of unique aspect of the Beacon House is the role of the advocate to make sure that family has immediate support from someone that can explain the process to them and be there with them through the reporting process. And to fill in those gaps that they may have to wait to get into long-term supports um, we can refer them to different community partners to get short-term solutions while they're waiting for that long-term support so when you say um, children and their family it sounds like this is kind of wraparound care so like you're looking at the child but like that has been victimized by whatever has happened but also the situation because they like they have a caregiver they have a mom they have a dad they have people that they live with they have people that are looking after them so it's I guess it, it's bringing all of that, you know, focusing on the whole situation that the child is in. Yeah, absolutely. Like um, disclosure of childhood abuse is devastating for anyone that cares about the child, obviously. So we really want to build that resiliency in the child, but also strengthen the family unit because the child needs to go back to a family that has the capability of supporting them through the healing process. So it's really working with the family to make sure not only is the child supported, but the family is strengthened as well. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, it's a really excellent point. And one of the things at the family court clinic that we do 
is we focus also on that family unit doing parenting plans and looking at it holistically to say, you know, what is really, to your point, what does that wraparound service really look like? And are we doing the right things at the right time? Because I think it's really important to be timely in, in our capacity to create care and, and to be supportive of, the, of that particular family unit. So it really builds on our capacity within the court system, having that experience to really draw and leverage on our experts as well to say, you know, are we doing those right things? And if we are doing the right things, how do we create long term really positive effects on the family because evidence tells us that early intervention and strong interventions create longer and better outcomes. Absolutely. Well, like I think that that's a pretty easy sell, like preventing, you know, long-term trauma and dealing with these issues in childhood, like as soon as they come up is obviously a better solution than letting it and I guess that's the whole concept of the Beacon House, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, it it really is. We 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 want people to understand that it's a service that has been waiting. You know, part mm -hmm. of uh, you know the conversations that I'm having from people that I work with on a daily basis is, thank goodness, wow, this is great, isn't it amazing that we're finally here? And it's such, it's so wonderful to hear that, to hear that this is something that people have been waiting for for so long, so there's so much support out there, so when our doors open, we know that it's not just about taking care of those children, of that children and family unit, but it's also knowing that we have all of the support from all exactly. of our other, you know, key collaborators and other agencies that are, have just been waiting for this to take place. So, you know, having Catherine and CAS and, and St. Joe's at the table and focusing on making this happen has been probably one of the one of the most fulfilling um, um, parts of my career for yeah. sure. It's n I would never, say the same for me yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just such a great feeling to know that mm -hmm. this is something that when you have like minded people aiming towards the same mission and same values, it's just been f so fulfilling. So we can't really wait to get this out to the community and, and for people to see what we're really doing for these children and families. Wonderful. Okay, we're going to have to take a short break and we're going to hear more about, uh, you know, who's at the Beacon House, who are children going to be seeing when they go to the Beacon House, the whole process, and how people who are maybe watching tonight and would like to support the organization and support the great work you're doing can get involved. So please stay with us and we'll be right back after this break. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Carbon monoxide is a deadly gas you can't see, smell, or taste. Homes with fuel burning appliances and or attached garages must have working CO alarms installed outside all sleeping areas. Don't let the silent killer get you. Install working CO alarms today. Hi, I'm Dan Mailer. I'm the host of London Lights, the show where we talk about notable Londoners who have made a big mark big impact on the world of music, entertainment, sports, politics. Heartbeat of Mother Earth, I feel you and embrace your warmth. I see you dancing through the trees. Your song floats on the summer breeze. Community, we come together. We are the voice of our ancestors, thankful for how much you bless us. Feel the thunder in the drum, all our voices sing as one. Feel the power, feel the pride, feel the drum beat deep inside. Feel the boom, feel the bass, let's let go of time and space. It'll make you dance, it'll make you sing. Ode way gun, wedok wishin. The drum will lead you, take you far. Always remember who you are. Welcome back to LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. I am your host, Brona, and I've been speaking to Catherine and Tuin, who are both coming together, like a lot of community organizations are coming together for this fantastic new organization called the Beacon House. So 
Catherine, maybe you can start with what does it look like for, you know, when when a child or, you know, a child comes in with their family to make a report of a crime and how that ref whole referral process would work? Yeah, absolutely. So when we talk about a multidisciplinary team on site, a lot of people picture, you know, a child sitting at a table with four people surrounding them, staring at them while they tell their story. That's not the case. Um, we have the Beacon House set up with two interview rooms and the child will be interviewed by one person, but the other people that are there to also take part in the investigation can have the ability to watch and listen to the interview. Um, so the people that are normally involved would be the Children's Aid Society, police, um, we may have to bring in a medical expert um, as well as the advocate that's there for the supports. So really our goal is just to minimize the amount of times that the child has to tell their story. Um, because right now they may you know, disclose to a teacher who then discloses to a principal and then they have to talk to a counselor and then they call the Children's Aid Society and have to talk to them and then they have to talk to the police. So we really want to have one place where everybody can meet the child and their family so that they only have to tell their story once because we certainly don't want to re-traumatize them by them having to tell it over and over again. So the Beacon House is just, like I said, a safe and welcoming space where the child can come in. Um, there's going to be a waiting room that has your mural that's bright and beautiful yes. um, <laughs> with some sensory toys that the children can calm down with and things like that. So we're really being mindful of making a space that's going to reduce anxiety and um, yeah, just help them through. We really just want to help them through the reporting process. And then Tuan can obviously speak to kind of the supports available through the London Family Court Clinic. Yeah, and, and so what Catherine's really talking about when they come in, when they're welcomed, is having that space that is safe and it's, it lets them recognize that it's about them. So it's very important that, you know, when, when they come into that space, that when they're going through that interview process and connecting with an advocate right away, that they have an opportunity to take that breath. And I think that's sometimes what's missing in the system. So when we have this sort of space, and by the way, thank you so much for this beautiful mm -hmm. mural that you're doing. No, it's, it's just, I'm it's, like, it's wonderful. I'm just like the, what's the, the four person. It's been like, t I've had teens, I've had seniors, I've had so much support because I think, like, as soon as I tell people about what the mission is as well, people want to get involved. They, they really do, and, and you know, that's, that's part of the welcoming piece of it, is to have people like yourself, and you know, we've had another muralist come in and do a second mural, is that people want to be part of it. And I think when you walk into the space, you can feel that energy, that it's really been a collaborative effort between people who want to do something. So when they come in and, and, and meet their advocate and have that interview, you know, it is true that the Family Court Clinic, we have access to many different types of counselors and therapists who, once we do that initial evaluation, we can make a determination on what would work best for the family. Is it a parenting plan? Is it a specific type of counseling or type of therapy that we're going to connect them with? Is it, is it us at the court clinic who are going to do it, or is it one of our, our collaborators within the community at a different agency? So it really is, like Catherine said, an opportunity to be in one place but have access to everything. So, so for us, it's meaningful because it's intake all the way through to output. So it's, you can see it happening. So it's not like we're disconnecting from the family and letting something else happen. It's connection to them from the beginning right through to the end. So it's just been probably, like, you know, like I said, one of the most fulfilling things, but for so many different reasons, not just, oh, we're creating something wonderful. It's about really watching that healing process take place in a space that's built to help uh, navigate through that healing process. So it's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of we're here to help and we're watching that help take place. So I, I couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really the justice system the way, you know, it's supposed to work. You know, coming from a, a law background as well, I don't know if you guys knew that I was a lawyer as well. <laughs> you know, you know, another one of my... You do wear many hats. Right, yeah, right. But mm -hmm. I, like that is one of the things that, you know, my colleagues, my peers from law school who have um, worked in the criminal system are always like, if like there are so many people that are here that if somebody could have helped them when they were younger, they never would have gotten right to this mm -hmm. point in their life and this is kind of like seeing that dream yeah mm -hmm. because you know turn with, into reality it's true and with Catherine's team you know it's pre-charge 
So, you know, charges may not have been laid yet. So once they are laid, well, we have another program at the Family Court Clinic that can help people through that process of child witness preparation. So, and that is one process that's near and dear to my heart. And also we have a service dog, which works within that program, yeah. <laughs> you know, Wiser, who, and she's been a fabulous addition because we, you know, we, we hope to have another service dog for the Beacon House as well. But we, again, we have those experts who already know. So the implementation and the call to action to do those things is really where at the point we are now. So it's just been, again, I'm, I'm, you can tell I'm quite excited yeah, about it. Yeah, we're all very excited. We're kind of in the pilot phase right now, yes. but we're so looking forward to seeing the impact that we have on the kids that come to the center and the families. Yeah, and doing it like this, I think, is really key mm -hmm. because, you know, like Catherine said, you may have a referral and then you have to wait and then you have to talk to someone. Well, just having it under one spot gives us the opportunity to say we're gonna we want to put a put a break into that trauma element so you only have to tell your story once and we're all here and we're all prepared and we're all ready and i think that's one of the things about beacon house is that we're prepared to do it so when you walk in we're ready and i you know i believe i don't think the system's missing that but i think the system misses that in one spot mm -hmm. fantastic so Obviously, um, funding has to be coming from somewhere. So you've got your community partners. How has the community response been? And are you looking for more partners or more people to support the Beacon House? Well, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so we do have the backing of Justice Canada. So, you know, and that, that takes care of a certain portion, but we really rely upon our, you know, the community and the kindness of others, so to speak, to help us through it. So yes, we would, we always welcome donations. It's one of the ways that we can continue to offer the service. 100% of everything that people contribute goes towards service delivery, doesn't go towards anything else. Um, so it's really, it, for people out there who are looking to connect with something that is truly meaningful. I mean, you know, I always like to ask the question, who's that person who doesn't want to stop the trauma of a young child? You know, and, and if you connect with that in any way, then you can help us. And we would love it if you could, because it's an opportunity for us to do something better today to build a better tomorrow. So it's, it's, it's an opportunity for not only individuals, but for businesses. You know, we look for furniture donations yeah. that would be, you know, you could use in an office. We've had a lot of, uh, I've taken a lot of calls and emails from people <laughs> asking if they can donate uh, bedroom furniture or dining room sets. and though that would be wonderful we, we we just simply can't accept those items but you know small clean uh, gently used sofas chairs for waiting room space or an even brand new toys we have an amazon wish list mm -hmm. that people connect with um through uh, we have a, a beacon house link on the on the beaconhouselondon.ca website where people can get those sensory toys and what we mean by that is they're toys that children can use like fidget toys, fidget spinners, mazes, so that they can begin to use their brains in a different way as well while they're, while they're waiting rather than just focusing on this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for those who you know think, well, I don't wanna I give cash. Well, you can help in different ways as well, volunteerism too. So you know, I, don't, I don't know if there's anything else that we really need besides mm -hmm. those items, but any help from anyone would be more than welcome. Absolutely. And so what kind of volunteer opportunities are there other than painting with me? <laughs> other than painting. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, I wish I, I had the opportunity to volunteer for that too, because <laughs> I think that would have been great. But um, we are looking for advocates. We're looking for individuals who, who could potentially or have experience in this area who would like to volunteer their time. Um, you know, anyone with this skill set, I think it's important for people to recognize that this skill set is very important. If you've worked with children in the past, um, you know, they can feel free to reach out over, you know, via the website or to me directly at the, at the court clinic. And I'd be happy to engage in a discussion. We've had, uh, I probably fielded about a dozen to maybe 16 to 18 uh, phone calls and emails from people asking to volunteer. So it's, the uptake has been fantastic because people are connecting. And what a uh, something to connect to. It's just, I think it's empowering for a lot of people because some people don't know how to help. And this is how you can do it. 
All right, so that's your call to action, viewers. Um, the Beacon House, amazing. Uh, like, uh, I, it's an absolute privilege to be involved and just to know that an organization like this is, you know, here in London and going to be serving our young people in the community for years and years to come. So thank you so much, Catherine. Thanks so much, Tuin, for being here. We're going to have to take another break, but we'll be back with a little bit more LDN ONT TV after this. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Eddie <laughs> Fell. <laughs> well, I'm not driving. I'm way too stoned. How are you feeling, beer? Oh, since we had that talk, I'm not driving tonight at all. <laughs> what, what about, about you, Dave? Dave? You only had a couple of drinks. And only a couple of puffs. I don't drink and drive. No way I'm getting behind the wheel when I smoked weed, too. How are we getting home, then? You can drive, Dave. Come on, Dave. Take one for the team, buddy. Don't let weed and alcohol influence your decision to drive. Yeah, I need a ride. About 16% of the people we talked to actually became homeless during the pandemic. And it's a horrible thing to be. And this one will escape the Niagara end. We have a counterattack the other way. Ooh, that's a pass right in front and a goal. Wow. And how quickly can defense turn into offense? Welcome back to LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. We've been having a fascinating conversation with some wonderful people who are involved with the Beacon House and we did talk about my artwork a little bit, but there is inspiration for the artwork that I've been working on with my volunteers and the inspiration came from a fantastic art piece which was created by 10-year-old Emily who is here with us in the studio with her mom, Catherine. So welcome to the show, Emily. Thank you for being here. Can you tell me a little bit about your artwork? So I know you said that you created it with your special markers. Did your mom tell you about what the Beacon House was all about and then this just came to you? Yes, so she wanted a lighthouse or a beacon house and she wanted some waves and the ocean in the background. So I wanted to do like a heart for the waves to surround the beacon house. It looks beautiful. So how long did that take you to make? I just rushed through it in like five minutes. <laughs> You're kidding me. This is what you can do in five minutes? Yeah. Do I have a wall to fill for you? <laughs> so what other types of art do you like to do? I like to do um, people I like, and I like to do animals and scenery. Do you like to do other things other than drawing? Do you like to paint or do sculptures? I like to paint and draw mostly. Nice. And so do you do a lot of artwork in school? Yes, sometimes when we do it, everybody says mine is the best. And they, my friend Elena, she comes over to me and she says that she wants me to do the same thing that I did on my art and copy it on her art. Really? Yes. So, well, one of the things about the digital world, right? It's just pretty easy to take pictures on your phone. So I bet you a lot of people are really looking to get um, some Emily Dan originals. <laughs> <laughs> what other things are you interested in? So an artist, what other things do you like to do in school or um, outside of school? Outside of school, I like to play baseball and play with my puppy. And inside of school, I like to do math. Math. So you are kind of a athlete, artist, mathematician. And what do you think you want to do? I know it's early in your career, but are you moving, thinking maybe artist someday or maybe athlete or where would you like to go with life? Well, I might be an artist or a vet or a doctor. Those are all great choices. And interestingly enough, you can actually be all those things. Um, for example, so Catherine, when you saw the drawing, what did you think? Uh, I know her artwork is always amazing, so I wasn't surprised, but 
Um, I shared the image that uh, she created with our committee and everyone loved it. So that is what we created our logo off of for the Beacon House. So everyone was instantly wanting to use her photograph because it was, or her picture because it was created by a child and it's obviously well suited for the Beacon House since we are helping children. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. So I appreciate the inspiration. I know everybody that's been working on the mural with me has been just in love with your artwork. It's going to, I think a lot of people are going to see it and it's going to mean a lot to a lot of people. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for sharing your gift of art. And I guess thank you for tuning in because that's all the time we have for today. So we hope you've enjoyed this episode of LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Brona, Emily, Catherine, thanks for being here too and as well. And thank you viewers. Hope you'll join us again next week. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, my life changed forever. During the pandemic, all of our lives changed and many of us turned to alcohol and drugs to cope. As life returns to normal, the increase in substance use from COVID has lingered, and some police services report an increase in impaired driving that caused heartbreak and devastation. Now, more than ever, we need your commitment to never drive impaired and to encourage all of your family and friends to do the same. Together, we can save lives. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. This is Rogers TV. Jeff from Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff here, and we're back for part two of barbecue with the Barbecue Pit Boys. Last time we had too much fun. My buddy Jason and I didn't get a chance to get in front of the grill, and I promised her we would. So we're going to head over there right now and see what's cooking. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram with Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. So you're apparently not just the looks of the operation, you're a 